että pakkeina uudet tulokkaat. Sour Cream Snacks ja Flaming Hot Snacks. Kotikatsomoissa mukana Wilhelm Snacksit. Hello, everybody, and welcome to yet another featured presentation here with NHL Gamer. It is the ECL Elite Division Season 11. In case you weren't sure, my name is Tuki, joined as always by my broadcast partner, Sin. Always trying to keep you on your toes here. You never know what you're going to get with the ECL. And we are back again for another wonderful Monday's worth of action. Four games for you in this broadcast, kicking things off with YMCA Sports taking on Roots Gaming. Two games there in a home-and-home home series, and then later on in this broadcast, it is H-Reds and Firestad, which said we appear to be the official commentators for Firestad. We've covered them quite a bit already to start this season. So in store for another great night of action. Sin, how you feeling about what we have on deck here tonight? I'm feeling great. And Procaster tip, don't leave on the actual live stream in the background. Oh, you'll hear a massive echo and freak out and think something's going wrong on your end. But yeah, as you mentioned, we do seem to get a lot of the FBK uh, streams here, which I'm, you know, they're such an exciting team to walk and they're, you know, they're growing in leaps and bounds, you know, couldn't ask for much more. But this first matchup indeed is going to be super exciting. Two teams really kind of fighting it out for better, you know, uh, seeding in the standings right now. It should be very interesting to see. Absolutely. So with that, let's get you a quick look at all the action that is going on today around the Elite Division here again. The 11th season of the ECL, that wonderful 15K prize pool awaiting the winner of this season. Sin, as we've talked about through every broadcast that we've covered so far, some big games. Pretty much every game day features big games. The points more valuable perhaps than they have ever been due to the strength of of competition that we have seen and again we have ymca and roots firestad and h reds but also intrigued to see what's going to be happening with the epivascal and of course philadelphia last year's runner-up some very interesting games to keep an eye on today yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you look at the matchups here and the records for each of these teams, they're they're near identical. The point total is near identical. I mean, the points really don't get much bigger than this. These are all kind of those contender type teams really fighting it out somewhere in the middle of the standings and, you know, roots like placed right now at 11th. But only, you know, three points behind their opponent today of YMCA placed at uh, seven here with uh, 12 points. It's it's quite a sight to behold as we're getting a look at the standings here. And you can just see how close it is. Th third through seventh, all with 12 points. After that, you have 11, you have 10, then nine. I mean, it's anyone's tournament here to get into the playoffs. It's just going to be such an exciting season here. You even look at a team like Sawo Esports in the basement right now on four points. But still possible if they fight their way back in, although... Of course, if you pay attention to us on our socials or at NHLGamer.com, you know a big change there as well to their lineup with uh, Superbeard to leaving that team. So storylines up and down the lineup here throughout this division. We've continued to see how it's played out here in the early stages. Again, still have a long way to go in this season. But once again, we're glad that you're joining us here to see more of the action unfold. And that brings us to today's matchup, the first game of two in this particular matchup again it is ymca esports and roots gaming sin i mean the offensive advantage for ymca certainly stands out but as do the defensive uh, defensive efficiencies there's a lot to talk about with these two teams yeah kind of like um you know, almost a battle of the opposites here. YMCA scoring a lot of goals, having trouble keeping the puck out. Roots, on the other hand, having trouble putting up too many, but good job keeping the puck out here. And sometimes it's best to build from, you know, the blue line out and the goal line out. So Roots may have the advantage when it comes to that, being able to keep the puck in the net. You know, just got to work on their scoring a little bit. They do have an impressive power play conversion rate. That being said, you know, a potent offense can do just the same and ruin that very, you know, pretty looking goals against for Roots. Absolutely. And again, we'll be talking more about the individual stats that you're seeing on screen now. For the moment, though, let's bring it over to the team matchups. We'll get a look at the lineup here. First for YMCA Sports, we see JM98, who does not rock the number 98. 
I will only mention that no less than three times in this broadcast because it frustrates me for some particular reason. Centered by Angel Kuru and, of course, Timothy on the right. Defensively, the name we're going to struggle with the most in this broadcast, Kopi Pelia, is there alongside Wenger. And, of course, it's built up between the pipes. On the other side, for Roots, we see one of the best names in the game. It's Migo Buna alongside Popa Toflin and Sadapoika. Defensively, Sile and Tonski with Kazu between the pipes. Now, Sin, of course, we look at these two teams, and we'll get into the individual breakdowns in a moment here, but I want to mention recent results for these teams. And looking at YMCA last week, they swept Sawo two games to nothing. They swept Conquer Gaming two games to nothing. And then they were swept by the Gotham Knights in their final series of the week. But all in all, not that bad going 4 1 and 1. A good bit of momentum heading into this week. And of course, as we've seen, uh, they are currently in the playoff structure. On the flip side for Roots, uh, maybe not exactly uh, what you would have wanted. I mean, it was it was decent. You split a two game series against Northern Ascendancy and you swept Dark Horse. So. They may be a little bit further ahead in the standings. They have two games at hand among the majority of teams. So we could see them get up to as high as a fifth place spot if the results go their way today. Yeah, absolutely. If you're Roots, you're, you're definitely hoping for the split. But if you can get like three or four points out of this, that would be, you know, optimal. You can shoot yourselves right back into that playoff, you know, position, as you mentioned, with the two games in hand here. And if you're YMCA Esport, you got to be loving the momentum that you've built. I mean, if we would think back to last season when YMCA was known as the unlucky boys, they sort of went on a tear at the end of the season to put themselves in a playoff position and, you know, had a pretty good outing, all things considered, even though they didn't get as far as they may have wanted to. So, so it's a good thing for them that they're getting you know, on their horse, so to speak, early on in this series. Now the struggle is trying to maintain that momentum through the end, uh, you know, through the tail end of the season, to keep themselves in the playoffs and such. So with that, we will take a look at the individual matchups now, starting off, as always, with the battle of the centers. For YMCA, we see Akel Kuru, and of course, again, for Roots, we see Falpa Toflin. Now, Sin, what stands out for you here? I got to be honest, for me, uh, the massive face-off advantage on paper for Roots with Falpa Toflin really stands out. But, I, I mean, there, there's more obvious things, I suppose, yeah. that could stand out when you're comparing these two so far. Yeah, I mean, you know me, I love to talk about the face-off differentials and, you know, really, you know, break it down to where there's win they're winning their face-offs as well. But you cannot get over the fact that when you have, you know, we'll see the numbers from JM and Timothy in a bit. You know, their production level is insane. Angel Kuru, only three points in four games with the amount of offense that this YMCA off um, – team is capable of it's it's sort of interesting seeing him you know with only those three assists so far now he has only played those four games so you know needs to get more time under his belt however you know he, he wants to get going offensively we're seeing you know the the production there from full patoflin you know almost two points per game for a center that's absolutely optimal and of course you know, we mentioned he's winning the faceoffs too so when you're looking at it head to head right now on hell's got a lot to prove in this series Absolutely. Let's move over to the battle of the wingers here now. And as you mentioned, uh, some interesting names here so far as we have JM and Timothy. Uh, also, I, I do appreciate the suggestion to have it be Jimacy and Timothy, and it might yes. just have to be that <laughs> after today's broadcast. But so far, off to a tremendous start are the two wingers for YMCA. On the flip side, again, with Roots, we have Miko Buna and Sada Poika. Uh, both you know, respectable numbers for those two as well, Sin. But what stands out for you here amongst these four? Yeah, I mean, it's for me, It's you got to look at the entire front front threes we're kind of seeing you know an opposite thing where the wingers of ymca are absolutely dominant and the centers sort of lagging behind and then you look at you know roots and fulpa toflin you know beating both of his wingers when it comes to point totals and it, it's sort of interesting how that kind of plays out throughout the course of the year and if roots wants to get that offense going you know both miga buna and sadapoika here are gonna have to step it up and just you know get a few more points on the board help their team to some more offense We'll see if they can do just that again. Puck drop for game one in just a matter of moments. Let's bring it over now to the battle of the defensemen. As for YMCA, we see Kopi Pelia and Wenger. And, of course, for Roots, at Sile and Tonski. Sin, four defensemen that are capable of putting up points. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a dangerous team when you have defensemen who, you know, are able to put up those points. And while Roots hasn't scored a lot, we saw their numbers, only 17 total goals for. It's good to see that the defense is getting that many touches on those on those, you know, 
uh, on the scoring that they do have and just imagine where they could be if they just got a bit more of that production i mean they it seems like they love to work it around through all of their players everyone gets a touch and that leads you know sort of everyone uh you know having having some offensive production on the flip side ymca with the much higher scoring you know output lower sort of numbers from the defense but you cannot pass up what kopi's doing seven points in just four games played keep an eye on him he could be a big game changer back there on the point Tremendous start to this season for him. Let's bring it over to the battle of the goaltenders now for YMCA, of course, once more. It's Viltsup going up against Kazu and send some decent numbers here, all things considered. But again, we see kind of that, you know, the, the lopsided uh, games played numbers this time, though, in favor of YMCA. But Viltsup, it's going to be interesting to see just how that affects this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. It seems that Roots is kind of favoring a 1A, 1B scenario. Swag, you know, has those four games played. Kazu with four games played. He's getting the nod here in net, and he's got his work cut out for him, as we mentioned, with how strong YMCA is. Now, neither of these goaltenders' numbers are where you kind of want to be. We always talk about you got to hit for that, you know, 80 save percentage. So they're both looking to, you know, improve their own numbers personally. But when it comes down to it, the most important stat is always that W. Absolutely. So again, just a, a few moments away here from puck drop. We are going to get to one more thing here before we get down to business. And that, of course, the keys to success. And Sim, we're going to start off here with YMCA and what they have to look to do in this particular matchup. First key here, you talked about them already. Jimacy and Timacy having career seasons right now, combining for 19 of the team's 28 goals on the season. Both top 10 in assists and points as well. Breakout seasons for those two, and they need to continue at that pace to keep things going this well for YMCA. And the second point, though, it's it's a bit of a problem. It's not so positive. Special teams and name only. The second worst power play efficiency in the league. They're tied for the worst penalty kill. How they're even in a playoff spot in the early stages of this season is kind of a mystery. It is their clear Achilles heel. They need to get that special teams game on point. And then, of course, versatility or concern. And you would have seen it with the games played. Most teams, you know, have stuck with their main lineup. But YMCA have already used seven different skaters. Not sure if it's scheduling issues or if they're still trying to find the right lineup. It's worked so far. Again, in a playoff spot right now, our seven seed. But as we know, the top teams in this division have those solidified six that they go with. And YMCA need to find their sin when it comes to roots what are the three things that stand out for you that they need to do to walk away with the lion's share of the points today yeah, well, we alluded to it a little bit when we were going over some of the uh, offensive production and the numbers for each of them individually. But first and foremost, it's going to take a total team effort. And they have shown that already in the season. From their four wins, all the game-winning goals have come from a different player. Every player has at least two goals, including the defenseman, which is impressive this early on. And Kuru is top 10 in assists. Sealy has the fourth most hits. It just shows, you know, how versatile and, and how much, you know, this team has. All the tools, they just, you know, all they need need is that one extra step to get it up there but you know the advantage to that is you really as their opponent have a tough time just holding in and trying to shut down one player everyone on this team is dangerous now the second key here is to stay disciplined they're you know third in total hits ymca is in fourth if the on you know paper stats mean anything it could be an incredible physical battle a lot of neutral zone turnovers with the hits look for the you know stepping up at the blue line but the key is you got to stay out of the box you know we talked about ymca you know really not having a good special teams if you're roots you don't want to give them a chance to turn that around at this point in the season and third and third and final point here is make them pay you know ymca they also hit a lot they take a lot of penalties their special teams hasn't looked pretty good and if you're roots looking to get that off those offensive numbers up this is your chance to do it you already almost have a 40 percent on the power play it's a strength of yours use it to your advantage it's going to be very intriguing to see how that plays out. Anytime we seem to think that special teams will be a very big factor on a, either a quick two-game series like this or a best of five, a best of seven, whatever it may be, uh, it never seems to happen. Both teams, you know, seem to keep their heads and, you know, stay out of the box. So we'll see what happens here in this particular matchup. Again, just moments away from puck drop game one of two between YMCA Esports and Roots Gaming Sin. We've built it up about as much as we can, and we've talked about it a lot so far. Uh, when it comes down to this league, right when you think you know how it's going to play out, 
oftentimes it goes completely out the window in a different way. Loving the team unity from YMCA, though. Absolutely. There it's a throwback to their old uh, you know, logo with the unlucky boys. It's the burger boys as uh they've mm. kind of been known loving a lot around you. I I mean, what else can you say? You have to appreciate it. Uh, they love to have fun. It shows in their gameplay. It shows in their personalities. We love to see it, especially, you know, in esports. We got we love to see that personality coming out. Absolutely. So again, just a few seconds away here. First game of two between these two particular teams. And of course, I'll have two more games for you later on between Atreds and Faryastad. A very intriguing matchup there between two teams currently inside the playoff structure. So a lot to play for here. Like we mentioned, YMCA Esports currently in the playoff picture. Roots currently in 11th. They take all four points here. They could be as high as fifth by the time this matchup ends. The early stages of a season, always interesting with how quickly the situation can change for really any given team, as you see there. YMCA in the white, Roots in the black and green. So I'm going to put you on the hot seat. Who's it going to be? How's game one going to go? Man, that's a tough call, but... Um... You know, as they're starting to get things figured out, I'm going to go with the higher offensive output for this. Kind of, you know, against my uh, my own position here. I think the offense is going to take it here with YMCA. We'll see how this goes here in the early stages. Roots trying to get that early possession. Pass there down low from Eko Boone. It doesn't quite work out. We'll see how YMCA approach these break-ins to the offensive zone. Good short passing there. And Kuru and Timothy shot on. Gets the traffic rebound is there. Not much sauce on it from JM98. Kazu able to make a pretty big stop, though, early on. Didn't panic in that situation. Yeah, but that's it's good to see, you know, YMCA able to get into that zone early. Often we can see the neutral zone battle ensue pretty early on, but a good job entering, and here they are again with a face-off win, a chance to cycle the puck down low. A chance now back up at the point. A little bit of trouble there with the traffic. Wenger getting out of a tough situation there. Both wingers pressuring him. Have to keep an eye out on that if he's going to hold the puck at the point for that long. A little bit of trouble down low there. They're able to get the puck out. We'll see again now what Roots are able to do here. Slap shot just stopped. Looked like there might have been an overcommit there from Viltsa, but able to stand tall and make that save. And here come YMCA. Bit of space for Angel. Kuru shot it just wide of the post. What an individual effort. Just couldn't finish the play. Pass back in front was intercepted. Here come the Roots wingers leading the charge. A defenseman stepping up to help out here. Migo Buna on the off wing trying to handle the puck. Can't do so. And a lightning quick start to this first game between these two teams. A fake slap shot there at the point to try and open up that little bit of space. Great movement. And there's the one tee. Just not going through. Kofi Pelia. And a chance now again, Roots right now looking to hit on the counterattack to get that momentum swing in their favor. And there'll be a cover of the puck there for Bilts up. So a very good start for YMCA in terms of dangerous offensive chances from their cycle play set. Yeah, good possession, good zone entries. They've been pretty good at limiting, you know, the def um, any any offensive pressure from Roots so far. And another good defensive zone win right there. We talked about, you know, perhaps Fulpatoflin having the advantage in face-offs. But right now, Angel Kuru winning the, winning the important ones, offensive zone and defensive zone. Absolutely. And here come YMCA oh, one more time, but forced to drop it back. Almost halfway through this first period already. Of course, in the past, uh, Sim, with the way the game's played out, great dump and chase there, just mistimed. But in the past, with the you know the meta of the game, we have seen it where oftentimes the first 10 minutes would be incredibly slow. This year, though, Sim, we've seen teams really wasting no time. That feeling out process hasn't really been there. It's been pedal to the metal from the puck drop. Yeah, you know what? It might not be extremely comfortable for all players on all teams, you know, the adjustment period. But for us and for the viewers, it's very exciting. Quick out here for Patolfin, just not able to get that one in front. At the pass there, Sadapoika was with him. Great chance there, though, for Roots, and perhaps finding a little bit of an opening there, Sin, using the slap shot to make that breakout happen. Yeah, and we've seen both teams sort of try that. Bank passes with the slap shot. Not exactly the Hail Mary that we see so often from Faryastad, but it's good to see, you know, defensemen especially utilizing all the tools necessary on the breakout as we have a two-on-one developing. Luna in front side of Poika on the backhand. He scores, and Roots take the one to nothing leads. Then it can happen that quickly, and they get the opening goal. 
Yep, and that's exactly what Roots needed. Get on the board early. Get their offensive guns going. And from both of the wingers as well, Migo Buna and Sadapoika, the, the latter getting the goal right there, but both of them getting two important points. We mentioned if this team's going to have to start seceding, they're going to have to start getting more production. And that's a good way to start things off here in the first period. one nothing for Roots. Of course, a couple of changes to that lineup heading into this season. One of the common themes throughout the league would be changes in the lineup. A lot of teams trying to get that chemistry going. Good job there for Roots to get that opening goal after a couple of early scares from a YMCA. And here they come again, back on the attack. Great defense there, though, from Stile to shut things down. Roots, though, trying to get something going on the stretch pass. Picked back up by Sadapoika. Runs into a lot of traffic. And we get a breakout pass there once more. YMCA trying to get things going back down the other way. Good movement on Hokuru, who dishes it back to the point. D to D to get it over to the other side now. Timothy down low in the corner, over to the defense, but again, just can't hit the top corner on the far side. Same we talked about the offensive production from Kopi Pelia as a save there on the near side shot, but talked about that offensive production from Kopi Pelia with the seven assists in four games. Uh, really looking like Timothy wants to get him his first goal at this stage. Couple of looks up to him. Pinching down from the point, but a chance here. An errant pass quickly dissipates, and we'll see what Timothy can do leading the counterattack. Good movement once more from YMCA, breaking into the zone. Shot on deflection bid. Timothy in front. Cobbs is able to make the stop. Yeah, it really looks like YMCA, as you mentioned, want to get the defenseman involved. As we saw, Kopi kind of sneaking into what I like to call the happy spot. If you're a, if you're a left defenseman with a right-handed shot, you can sneak into that you know high slot when the right winger has the puck on the half boards. Usually, open yourself up. It's tougher to do it in this high-level gameplay. Someone will recognize it pretty quickly, but they still got the shot away. No goal came of it. But now, if you're Roots, you have to think about that. You have to keep your eye on Kopi uh, Pelaya, and if you're it's it, it's tough to do because if you're looking up, you're not looking down. Your collapse might suffer from it. So that's a good job of YMCA utilizing their points early on to try to get Roots gaming to spread out. A chance here off a crucial icing call, perhaps thrown out the back of the net by Migo Buna. He'll go back to the point. Quickly back down low in front. Wrist shot fired wide. Never really a threatening chance to close up the first period slap shot from the point straight into the shoulder. And that'll bring us to the end of the first. So a decent start for the opening five to ten minutes for YMCA. Some dangerous chances, but San Roots getting that oh so important first goal. Yeah, and, you know, very importantly, you know, keeping the puck out of the net. That's, I mean, that's huge. They, YMCA looked ex incredibly dangerous at times, but with only two registered shots, Roots definitely did their job as we're seeing the replay there on that two-on-one and almost a, you know, partial breakaway at the end there from Sadapoika, who beat, beat Viltz up. And you mentioned, you know, Viltz up was looking a bit uneasy in the crease at times. He did sort of, you know, slide the wrong way on that, but that's, you know, not necessarily, you know, on him. If you're if you're the YMCA defense, you, you don't want to allow any chances like that, you know, close to one-on-one -on -one with your goaltender as well. So we'll see how Viltzup does as this game continues on. So the second period underway now here. Again, the lone goal and an opportunity quickly for Roots off the turnover, perhaps. Great patience on display from Popa Toflin goes back to the point. Roots will settle it down, take this offensive zone time. We'll see what they can do. Pass in front and a good trip there. Migo Buna looked to have a shooting lane. Roots going to the power play. Yet to see who's taking a seat here. But, Tim, we talked about it. Roots, third power play, third best power play in the league. Great opportunity here on the man advantage. Absolutely. I mean, we talked about it in the pregame, but a good faceoff win there for YMCA. If you're Roots, you have to make them pay. And, you know, YMCA, they're going to want to try to get out of the rut they're in with the special teams. Neither neither side of the puck on that front are they doing too well, but we'll see what happens here. This is one of the key matchups. Third best power play against one of the worst penalty kills in the league. The backhand from Fopa Toflin just not finding its way past Viltzup on that attempt. So, Good chance there for YMCA to uh, slow things down here a little bit after allowing the zone entry and uh, justifiably so. Sin Angel Guru doing a very good job so far in the faceoff dot for YMCA. Yeah, and you know to, to expand on that earlier point even further, I mean, YMCA really dodged a bullet. That was an incredibly slow shot animation from Fulpa Tolfa, and I'm sure he wanted something quicker because if he did, he had built up beat. 20 seconds to go on the man advantage here for Roots. Cycling it down low, now back to the point. Opportunity for Seelay the slap shot. Rebound was there, protected well by Kofi Palaya. 
And we're back to five on five, but it does not matter. Sile with a rocket from the slot. And Roots take advantage in the closing moments there. Really the aftermath sin of what was a, an okay power play. But hey, you get the goal regardless. It's now 2 up. Yep, we mentioned it on the other side when it was Kopi sneaking, sneaking in. This time, it's Sile. He gets into that high slot, and that's what you call a power play influenced goal. YMCA is still not able to get all their skaters back into the zone defending, and Roots may not be done. They're attacking again. Good breakup, though, by YMCA. They're going to have to get back in this quick. Big stretch pass doesn't go. Here's Sadapoika not able to make the move into the middle again for Roots. This is Sadapoika, and now Sile. With the goals chance there, trying to find Kuru in front of YMCA. You see the great passing on display right now by Roots getting into the offensive zone. Broken play, but maintaining possession here through a couple of breaks. Wrist shot off the escapes there. Sadapoika not able to get that one through. Do nothing here for Roots, but YMCA not done. The wrist shot not able to find its way through. See what they can do on the low cycle. Timothy looking shot on on the short side. And it's Kazu. Able to make that stop. Still 2 nothing. Big offensive zone draw here for YMCA. Yeah, we'll see if Angel Kuru can keep up his uh, stretch of uh, doing pretty well in the faceoff so far. And indeed, Kuru gets another victory. Can YMCA do anything with this momentum? Good quick movement to shot on. Dazu able to direct that one to the half wall. Still YMCA looking to get something going. Great pressure there, though, by Sadapoika. Now here's Migo Buna trying to create a little bit of separation. Sends it around the back. Good pressure there from the forward. Stone back in front and he scores. Sada point out of Migo Buna. Three to nothing. Roots in there. Start the pull away. Yep, and Roots swingers especially really getting going here. And that's exactly what they've needed to do. Three nothing now from Roots. That's an unfortunate break for YMCA. Two white jerseys in the slot. Unable to get an intercept. Unable to obstruct that puck whatsoever. And Viltz up is just is just caught there sort of in the in the middle to the left of his net not much he can do you have to trust your defense right there you you can't let you know the easy short side shot go in it's just an unfortunate break from ymca but you know good job from roots to keep forcing that puck into those high percentage areas <laughs> pass out of bike i nearly walked through with that one of course in the pregame we talked about the dynamic duo of jm and timothy here for ymca as they connect on this go around pass a little bit of pressure there. Timothy still in possession down low in the corner. Back down low again. JM and Timothy trying to find the space. Great play. Just not able to find the back of the net as Timothy tries to drive in front. Loose puck is recovered by Sile and Root survive. Another dangerous opportunity there for YMCA. Can they get the counterattack going once more? Son of Poika shot on is denied by Biltup. And Roots continuing to give YMCA trouble on the counterattack, Sin, like I was going to say, JM and Timothy, we talked about how di how dynamic of a duo those two are. It's been Migo Buna and Sada Poika really standing out here for Roots. One more chance in front, and Sada Poika just not able to drag that one home. What a dynamic trio we're seeing up front for Roots right now. Yeah, and YMCA just seems to be a bit flustered right now. Another stretch pass by Roots, unfortunately, couldn't hit the pass he wanted. Two Migo Buna there cutting in toward the middle. We'll see if YMCA can counterattack right now, but they, they're going to have to press right now. We can see him sort of rushing around. Good passing play there, but it never fooled Kazu on that attempt. And then what a start again it has been here for Roots, but a big chance. One goal is all you're really looking for. Five minutes to go. YMCA, you just need one to get back into it. It's the rich shot there, blocked off the draw. Another successful win for Angel Kuru. Options here, one timer just doesn't go. Again, those nice little odd angle one timers. The YMCA are getting looks for. They just haven't been able to find the goal. Sin, it's another penalty for YMCA. We talked about them. Fourth most power play or fourth most uh, penalty minutes. Uh, taking one of the worst penalty kills in the league, and right now it's really costing them in terms of momentum. Despite another clearance here on the man advantage. See what happens here one more time. Now, good poke check there on how Guru we're able to quickly send that one down. So, again, the big change in momentum here. It looked like YMCA were really going to get things going. Take another penalty, but the man advantage already half over. YMCA back in possession one more time. Two on one developing here. Timothy tries the short side. And again, it doesn't go. 
mind-boggling that YMCA haven't scored a goal to this point. Here come Roots, though, on the counter. Couple of options wrap around these scores! What a play that quickly! Roots now up 5-4 with the goal on the man advantage. And I'm pretty sure that was Tonski from the point coming in, leading that rush, the self-sauce to get himself some speed, went around the skill stick of JM, went around the net, put it home on the wraparound. You'll love to see that if you're Roots Gaming, your defenseman taking charge right there, not only on the rush, but to put the puck in the back of the net. And, you know, this day can't get much worse for Viltzup right now. I mean, that is, a, you hate to get scored on on a wraparound if you're a goaltender. Yet another power play goal for Roots Gaming and YMCA may be out of this one early here. They still got another period, but I mean, Roots is just running away with it, looking in complete control right now. Opportunity on the rebound. Shot covered up there from Viltzup. Four different goal scorers now for Roots. Look for the center, Popa Toflin, to get involved, but... Again, the wingers, the two defensemen both on the board. And a huge chance here for Roots to run away with this. And not only pick up the two points for the win, but now you're talking about goal differential sin, which is always kind of the one factor looming overhead, especially for teams on the bubble, as this one will go for Ice. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, you know, if you're Roots, you're loving this right now. You're coming here, you know, basically even. 17 goals for, 17 goals against. This is exactly how you want it to start things off. But SCA, the one-timer there yet again. Second chance shot on. Loose puck in front, kicked out. And Sin, that'll bring us to the end of the second period. I'll allow you to finish your thought there. But I do want to know from you as well as we head into the second intermission, why MCA so many close chances. Do we see a strategy change, or has it just been bad luck? And really, are they that unfortunate to not have at least found the back of the net at least once? I mean, there's some bad luck mixed in with this, but you really can't, you know, discount what Sile and Tonski are doing back there. They're doing a great job of positioning themselves to pick up those rebounds, not allow Jam and Timothy to, to get too many whacks at that puck. And, you know, on the flip side, you did mention some bad luck. Timothy, you know, missing the net, some of those one-timers that Kazu's getting over for, you know... It's it's a tough thing to say, but I noticed a couple of times where Sile, you know, got himself body position to box out the winger, whether it was Timothy or JM, and pick up the puck, start the breakout. They had really controlled passes to each other, and that's what I think the difference is right now. Roots Gaming are just very precise. It seems like YMCA is kind of panicking a bit, running all over the place, and when you get down early, then we started to see it sort of snowball. Roots was getting three on twos, and then, you know, in that case, you both Kopi and Wenger have to back up. They can't play the blue blue line if they're outnumbered and and we'll see. jam off the draw it's in indeed the turn over here chance timothy just not able to get a hold of that one it's been kind of like you were alluding towards here you know i mean especially too we've seen it before you never know when a game's over all it takes is one quick goal here for ymca but really too looking to build up a little bit of momentum heading into that second game between the two teams as Banger tried to get it back down low for jam a little bit off the mark roots off the mark as well, and the uh, responding option here is YMCA will recover. Three minutes gone here in the third period. Four to nothing lead for Roots, and they might be able to add to it here. Sadapoika, a little bit of space, tried to test an ear post. Toka Kalaya able to get a piece of that one. Thrown back in front, now back to the point once more at Sealy. As Tonski, but it likes to go down low into the corner. Good movement here from Roots. A loose puck is recovered, though. Is JM able to take that one away? And again, just mistimed at the line for YMCA. Then just maybe a little bit of frustration showing up at this point. Absolutely. When you're running out of time, when you're down by this much, you're, you, you know, you can't, what, you have to hesitate sometimes at the blue line, but not everyone's going to be on the same page. Everyone wants to go fast. You feel like you have to get that puck in. And a scramble there in front. JM98 just not able to find the back of the net on that attempt. Has it down low once more. Surviving the pressure. Tries to test him on the near post off a of back team. Interesting move there. Again, YMCA, great pressure. Just not able to put it together to get the goal that they need. Here come Roots one more time, but a pass in front. Quickly picked off. Again, the time slowly ticking away. Poked away now here. One more time. Sada Poika trying to lead the charge. Chance in front off the pads of Vilsa. No space and a miscommunication there at the line, Sin. Just been that yeah. type of game for Roots. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I I know what Wenger's doing, trying to hedge his bets, look for either Timothy or the guy cutting up the... 
He did have the pass up the middle. There was some space there, needed to make that, but that's what happens when you're down by this much. You start second guessing yourself. Bruce will again take that one away. Good pinch here from Banger. Got nothing to lose at this stage. Still has it here to the defenseman. Not able to hold on to it. The other defenseman, Steele, able to make the play. Space here. Migo Buna drops back. Shot on and stop. Second chance and a third four. Tato Poika just not able to find its way past Vilta. Gets down low one more time here. Roots relentless on the attack. Cycle work just not able to find the pass now. Eight minutes to go. A little bit over eight minutes. It's in. There you see the neutral zone pressure from Roots has been incredibly impressive. Really all game, but especially here in the last few minutes. And see they will win that one back. Sada Poika looking incredibly dangerous. And in he's been able to call games for Roots so far this season, but... I'd say the front three looking as confident and as comfortable as they have had, or you know, as they have all season long with the changes that they have made in this past uh, offseason. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really liking the addition of Full Patoflin in the middle. The pass over in front nearly found its way. Second chance slap shot tests him on the short side. Pure confidence right now from Roots on the offensive side of things. A little bit over four minutes left. To hold on to walk away with the first two points. Again, we'll have an immediate rematch between these two teams. So don't go anywhere. The first game of technically four in this uh, broadcast. Again, a little bit later on, we'll be seeing H Reds and Faryastad in action is somehow on Hokuru not able to find the back of the net on that one. And since there'll be a lot to talk about in between this game and the next about really the unfortunate. Uh, luckier for YMCA to have not found the back of the net. Still in on the attack here, though, with a minute and a half to go. Pass in front is picked off. Let's see what Roots look to do here. Going to be Migo Buna winning the race to this one. Pass over, and he scores! Hopa Tuflin! Five goals, five different goal scorers. What a game for Roots for their fifth win of the season. I mean, sometimes the t the keys for the game write themselves. We talked about it. The total team effort in all four of their wins, game-winning goals, have come from a different player each time. And now, in this one, every single player on Roots Gaming has a goal. That's beyond impressive. And, you know, if, if you're YMCA, you know, when it rains, it pours. We saw Angel Kuru hit the post on one end. And then a great pass for that short side one-timer gets intercepted by Migo Buna, who then is the recipient of that great pass off the boards, feeds it over to Fulpa Toflin. They bury it. Five nothing for Roots. And if it wasn't over before, it's 100% over now. But unlucky boys, a proud bunch here. They're going to keep pushing for that goal. Indeed. And we'll see if they can find it. Just a little bit of a momentum builder heading in to that second game, but certainly not the result that they were looking for. Uh, based off of their, you know, the results that they were able to acquire last week. But see what happens here. Still a little bit of time uh, to really play this out for, uh, you know, just a little bit of pride to at least get one on the board as Timothy feeds it to JM, who takes the hit quick out. Picked off by Wenger. 18 seconds to go now. Timothy off the cut and back to the point. Flex in front. Recovered once more by Roots. Dangerous play there, but they end up getting the breakout. Here's Migo Buna. Tried to go back across, wasn't there. Bofa Dolphin, back to Tonski, tried the glove side. Snipe just doesn't find its way through. 1.6 remaining sin. Again, a picture-perfect game, really, from the Roots gaming perspective. Yeah, you, you can't really get much better than that. You you know, you addressed some of your goal scoring issues and you kept the puck out of the net as you have been doing pretty well this season. And that's what happens when you go against your gut. You know, I went outside the box, thought that maybe the offense, the high flying offense of YMCA could, or YMCA could get this done. But it was indeed the defense and shutdown of roots that really seemed to stifle them. Now, that being said, YMCA probably deserving of a couple goals in this one. You know, the, the luck was definitely not on their side at times, but that's it's also a result of, you know, getting behind early when you're having to rush things, when you're having to press, you know, you're less precise with your movements and you and it, and it starts to feel like every single bounce is going against you. And while that's partially true, it's also because, you know, you're over skating things, you're gripping that controller just a bit more tight. And if your roots, you have, you know. Uh, the luxury of kind of waiting a little bit, taking that extra second to look for the play, to find the play, to look for your option, to pick up that loose puck. And that's exactly what we saw as the game went on. YMCA had to get
get more and more desperate and roots were just extremely comfortable playing in their system, playing their game. And they were able to just, you know, just suffocate YMCA. And that's exactly what they did. That's a picture perfect performance from Roots Gaming there. And if you're YMCA, it's going to be tough to come back from that one. You got to be wondering what went wrong. Why couldn't we put the puck in the back of the net? But you faced a tough team and they just got the better of you. And I mean, the, to bury the lead here a little bit, I suppose it's Kazu getting the shutout. His first of the season there for Roots and his first shutout in the elite division. Of course, someone who has played prior in our light and pro division as well. So a big game for him, a big moment for him there. Uh, sure that it was, uh, you know, nervous couple of uh, final minutes there, given some of the chances, of course, that YMCA had. We have a lot more to break down about this game, setting the stage, of course, for the second game between these two teams. Don't go anywhere because you need to hear from our lovely, lovely sponsor who helps make this happen. It's Wilhelm. Parasta purtavaa kauden kovimpiin koitoksiin. Sour cream snacks ja flaming hot snacks. Kotikatsomoissa mukana. Wilhelm snacksit. Now I'm just going to say, like, if you haven't, if you haven't, you know, purchased uh, any Wilhelm snacks lately, you should, because Sin and I are incredibly jealous of those of you yes. that can and we're still waiting one day for the hookup that will hopefully happen because Sin needs to destroy his throat with flaming hot Wilhelm snacks. And, I mean, I'll try the sour cream because it sounds delicious. Let's just be honest. With that, Sin, again, the second game of two coming up in just a matter of moments between YMCA and Roots. Let's just quickly touch up upon what happened there for Roots because I feel like there's a lot less to talk about when everything went right. You know, the defense maybe gave up a couple of chances, and like we alluded to, maybe there was a little bit of luck there to have not allowed a goal. Uh, like I said, big game as well for Kazu to get his first elite league or uh, elite division shutout, I should say. But all in all, I mean, for Roots, it's just a matter of keep capitalizing on your chances and maybe tighten up a little bit defensively, and it's tough to see how they don't walk away with all four points and, like we said, jump up, at least on paper, fifth place in the division. Yeah, and it just goes to show you this year, especially where if you have a good defense, you're really, you know, at a pretty big advantage. Now, we've seen some changes throughout with the balancing and things like that. You know, the poke checks definitely are stronger this year. Stick lifts, not as strong. And if you, you know, are understanding how to utilize those builds and when you get a lead like Roots did, we, we saw it at the blue line. They were just they were deadly. And then even in their own end, they did a really good job of, you know, holding their positions, holding their collapse. And if you're YMCA, it's. You know, it's tough that you didn't score, but you also you did get outplayed in a lot of senses right there. I mean, you were a bit too predictable at times. You hesitated a bit when you shouldn't have. You maybe were too fast when you shouldn't have been. So with YMCA, it's a lot to kind of fix. Um, I thought there were a couple unforced errors on the back end. Um you know, Kopi with that the, the second penalty that they took in the game, he was just trying to force the winger. I think it was Sada Poika wide, and he was you saw him with the defensive skill stick kind of moving it back and forth, maybe a little too crazy with it. And in my opinion, that's an unforced trip right there. That's something they got to clean up. We mentioned it. You can't take penalties. You've been struggling with special teams. Roots has a strong power play. That's simply, you know, one of those errors that cannot happen at this level. And it came back to bite them. And once you're down against a team like Roots, you're hard pressed to get back into it. And because they, as we saw it, they could just suffocate you. And their counterattack was on point. And then after a while, YMCA's defense. You have to keep backing up. You can't hold that blue line because you're always outnumbered. So we just kind of saw a snowball effect happening. And if you're YMCA, I think key number one for this is to get the first goal. Do not let Roots get that early lead because it. I'm not going to say that's the reason they lost or that spelled their doom, but it makes it very, very difficult to come back. I mean, we've seen it from other teams. We've seen it from the likes of Faryastad, who, again, we'll be seeing a little bit later on in this broadcast. It is incredibly difficult to play from behind. In this league, the talent level across the board is just way too high amongst these 16 teams. There are reason why th there is a reason why, of course, they are in the elite division here. So I completely agree with you. YMCA, of course, I would expect them to be able to get a goal or two in this game at the very least. And certainly they need that first goal here. And so, I mean, really, it, it is kind of almost a mirror match in some ways, just in terms of the physicality between these two teams. Like we mentioned, both teams top four in terms of registered checks so far. So it really is one of those things where, you know, for Roots, we saw it, that discipline was there. But for YMCA, they've had trouble, you know, being that aggressive, but staying out of the box at the same time. 
as uh, I'm not as I'm pretty sure, Sin, you might be looking for the same thing I'm looking for, which is for the screen to change so we can get a look at some of the builds. Yeah. I caught I, later. I caught the builds last time. I'm seeing if there's any build changes for YMCA, but they all readied up immediately. I'm pretty sure there won't be, but we're kind of seeing the European meta right now very heavily favoring the puck possession style. You're seeing puck movers on offense, puck movers, both of them back on the defensive end. And again, also on the offensive side of things, when you have that puck mover, it's not just the puck possession that's good. It's on. It's near the playmaker, not as good, but you get that advantage to the defensive stats, You know, to the defensive awareness. You want that higher for intercepts. Intercepts are tougher this year. You're going to want that poke checking poke checking stronger this year so we're really seeing the meta develop here between you know the forwards and the defense it's all about puck movers and playmakers so far absolutely so again the second game of two it is ymca esports against our roots of course you see ymca in the black roots in the white and green as mentioned a huge game for roots at this stage to take that jump towards the middle of the table in the playoff hunt which is exactly where you want to be as we see a jump there on the opening draw let's see how this one plays out now as roots quickly in on the attack but they see again the physical play from ymca but roots still in possession once more gonna test them around the post built up nearly caught out immediately in this game and sin maybe they've identified a bit of a uh, you know a little bit of a weak point we should say uh, four builds up trying to catch him there on the wraparounds. Yeah, I mean, well, if, if you're going to be able to get that down low cycle that easy, I mean, why not try it? It's so tough for a goaltender to defend against those angles from behind the net. Good four checking pressure here from YMCA. The pass from Kuru off the mark and a breakout here. Sada Poika has the defenseman with him. Forced to cut back. Great passing play. And again, trying on the short side. But a great job on the collapse there from YMCA. Migo Buna really nowhere to go. Both wingers, really, but nowhere to go, Sin on those counterattacking rushes for Roots. Yeah, he. I think Sadapoka attempted to stop and go right there, but he didn't count on the tenacity of the back jet from Timothy, who got in there and broke up that pass across. An excellent job on the back check. That's what you need. Five-man commitment on defense. Great job from YMCA right there. See them here back in possession. Already six and a half minutes gone. Incredible some of the, you know, the pace that some of these games have been played at through the first period compared to what we had seen in prior seasons just goes to show how the meta of the game itself can change on a game to game basis as we see roots win that draw great job though by jm to get in the lane and cut that one out but ymca forced to slow it down just a little bit trying to find their way a clean zone entry nearly found it there amigo one of the winger doing a good job of shutting things down it's Steele. Fenceman for Roots looking to lead the way down the other way. Goes for the dump and chase option. A little bit missed time there with the wingers, but good for checking pressure. Now back up to the point. Steele, who started the play. Great movement here from Roots. And again, it was Sadapoika nearly taking that one away. Chance here perhaps on the other side for YMCA, but again, the space quickly evaporating. They get it back down low, though. JM to Timothy. Over to Kuru. Good cycle play, but no lanes open right now. Strong collapse from Ruth, a wraparound bid there perhaps in from Timothy, just couldn't get the angle right. Yeah, it's rough animation right there. He had that post open, but they're getting right back in the zone, setting up again. It's a good block in front, but again, YMCA pressuring. Great blocks by Roots, though. Shutting down the shooting lanes from the point. Sauce pass across, Miga Buna on the backhand. What a feed that was. Very impressive here for Roots offensively. They go back to Sile. D to D pass to Tonski, and it's kicked away. By Avilza. What YMCA can do here. Back and forth action to start off this second game between these two teams. Again, Roots uh, with a very impressive 5 to nothing victory in game one. And YMCA with perhaps their best scoring chance between the two games. It's on Hokuru point blank. Rikazu able to make another stop. Yeah, looked like he was trying to either catch Kazu sliding to the right side or the left side on our screen or catching him five hole. I couldn't quite tell there, but either way, Kazu strong between the pipes once again. YMCA is still looking for a goal. For Roots, great defense there by Venga to shut down the two on one. And Kuru just picks that cross crease away. Both the way back to the point again, blocked down in front. Great job by both teams trying to defend some of these shooting lanes. An even more impressive job done by YMCA so far. Taking away these passing lanes. Very creative passes to try and find Migo Buna. Toe drag backhand just wide of the post again. 
the second time. Here you go, bonus come within inches of being able to find the back of the net here in this first period. As an errant pass gets YMCA a counterattacking opportunity. Stretch pass over to Wenger, the defenseman. Looking to pinch in, goes back down low to Angel Kuru. And it's taken away out of the pads. Here comes Roots one more time as we approach the final minute here in the first period. Sadapoika down low, goes back to his defenseman. Tonski throws it in front, open shot, he scores! Somehow, someway, the puck finds its way to Migo Buna. He has the second goal of the matchup. And Sin, bad news for YMCA Esports. Roots game and get the first goal. Yep, I think that play surprised everyone, including Migo Buna here. It's sort of a blind pass, and interestingly, um, there was no assist on the play, so it must have been briefly possessed or, or something by YMCA Esports, but what awareness right there from Tonski, just kind of throwing that puck towards the net, and Migo Buna picks it up uh, on a hop, and just, he hesitated a bit. I didn't think he was expecting to get that. Viltzup was frozen. Everyone was frozen right there, just surprised, and so it seems that that puck got through, but... You know, another opening goal for Roots Gaming here in YMCA. Just, oh man, they just can't get it going right now. Hope to get a look here and the yeah, in the intermission at that goal here to hopefully see if it deflected or not. Off a defenseman, Luke Puck is taken away. And again, Roots Gaming will take the one to nothing lead here into the second period. YMCA just one registered shot there sitting in that period. Not what they were looking for to start this game. No, definitely not. I mean, they're maybe looking for a few too many, you know, precise chances right there. They only had, I believe, seven shots total in the first one. We'll see in right here. Oh, wow. It looks like it went off Viltzup's stick. I'm still not sure why there's no assist on the play. It didn't look like anyone possessed it. That is a very bizarre play. <laughs> yeah. Is the only way I can read it. That's extremely weird i've never quite seen anything like that especially without an assist you know usually if you see something get through like that it'll be an assist for tonski on that play so either way i'm sure you know migo buno will take it roots will take it they have a one nothing lead again and once again ymca playing from the back foot great pass there jam tried to get a shot on good opening look there from timothy on the far wing again roots had counterattack quickly shut down timothy not able to get an outward pass so again looking like we're gonna have uh, ridiculously fast pace that we've seen from these two teams so far continue no signs of slowing things down again roots with the long goal on assist they're not cross goes and a great job there by Vengo to shut it down built up able to get a pad on it and roots not able to find that separation with that second goal at least not yet yeah but once again we're really seeing roots sort of capitalize on the spacing that they have right there with the counter attack coming out they're able to catch ymca you know with one less skater than they are once again a turnover it's just roots are just hounds on the puck right now it's very impressive to watch they're seeming to get almost every intercept that they want while ymca is still struggling with possession battle forward along the blue line taken away an errant move there chance and shot wide Papalia not able to get that one on targets and talked about it. Seven assists in four games heading into today's action for that first goal of the season. Looked like he had a really good chance at getting it as well for YMCA in that first game, really the first 10 minutes of the first period of that prior game. But right now, back and forth action continues. Both teams really struggling to get that offensive zone time going right now. Just consistently loose puck battles all over the ice. Yeah, and it's it just just goes to favor roots you know the more time ticks away it's better in their favor the more neutral zone battle better in their favor as time tick as time keeps ticking we saw ymca they kept having to get more and more aggressive and it just seems like roots is remembering that and try to lure them into that trap again so they can counter attack and you know get some of those easier you know chances with the three on twos and two on ones Dumped in here to the left hand side good timing too jm around the back on oh, no, the hokuru the wrap around but it's Kazu able to make the read and make the save. Send another great chance for YMCA Esports. Still no goals to show for it. Yeah, we've seen him break out that dump and play to the left corner a couple times now. I don't think it's worked better than that time right there. Unfortunately, no goal once again. Back to the point here. D to D. Wenger looking at his options. Kuru for Timis. He tried to go across and a great read there. It was Tonski shutting it down. Captain does it all here. Scores goals, makes great plays like that. Here come Roots one more time. Migo Buna tried to go back in front. Again, very creative passing here from Roots. That shot not on target. See what YMCA can do on the counterattack here. Timothy with a little bit of space back. Kuru tried to go back across for JM. 
the idea was right. The execution just wasn't there. Sin maybe a bit too fancy for their own good, but you could argue, I mean, if that pass makes it through, that is a near guaranteed goal. As a chance there, testing him on the short side. Again, very creative to some of the chances that we've seen. This ridiculous pace continuing. Sauced in front. Jam not able to get a hold of that one. Kopapalaya down low. Sends it on. He'll go through the backhand just wide. Full on side. YMCA desperate for a goal at this point. Be the first goal of the afternoon. Deflects wide there on a wrist shot from the point. And again down low. Timothy to Kuru. Tried to go back across just out of the reach of JM. Again on Kuru holding it down low. Defenseman gets the shot off. What a feed to Benger. Still they can't buy a goal. Sauce down off the pad there. Timothy not able to find the teammate on the play. Four and a half minutes remaining now. And we'll see what Roots can do on the counterattack. Migo Buna back over. Circles back and around. Popa Toflin taking his time. Looking for the play that he wants. Roots have all the time here to set up as well. You see YMCA maybe a little bit afraid to overcommit and work themselves out of some of these lanes. Migo Buna with a great chance. Follow-up chance for Popa Toflin. Does not go. Two and a half minutes remaining here in the second period. Timothy gets it over the line for YMCA. On Hell Kuru wrap around again. Does not go. Kazu makes the stop. Still one nothing after all of that sin. What a pass by Timothy right there. And another attempt for Angel Kuru on the wraparound. And they just can't buy a goal right now. And honestly, their offense can't get much better. They're swarming. They're buzzing. Let's we'll see what happens here. Sent in front. Just not able to find the target. Final minute of play here. YMCA able to keep this one in. Wenger around the back being fended off by Tonski. JM back for Wenger. There's the hit. Flipped out. Six seconds to go. Sin, that will likely bring us to the end of the second period. And indeed, an offside with 2.2 will just about do it. Roots holding on to a one to nothing lead. Both teams are probably unfortunate to have the goal total that they do through the first two periods of play, though. Yeah, especially if you're YMCA right here. And I want to kind of rewind a bit to that play where they had on the rush that you know you're maybe wondering if they're trying to be a bit too precise maybe one too many passes and when you, when you kind of look back on it it's it's almost like a catch-22 because the first initial pass was good the chance wasn't extremely optimal if you shoot it and you know it doesn't go in then you're thinking oh one more pass right there and in that case you made that extra pass and it just didn't go your way so it's, it's a really tough situation for YMCA. It just seems like everything you're doing isn't working. When you shoot the puck on net, you know, it, it, you're, you're not being rewarded. When you're going through those extra passes, making those pretty plays happen, you're still not being rewarded. And at some point, something's got to give. I don't know what it's going to take. They had one shot in the first, five shots in the second. Even better chances there, you could argue. And they still cannot get one by Kazu. It's it's kind of mind-boggling at this point with how strong they've looked, especially in that second period. Third period underway. Timothy with a step on the defenseman. Throws it in front. Jam still fighting for it. Guru dishes back to the point. Banger wrist shot to flex just wide. The glove side post and Sile will look to slow this one down just a little bit here as Roots get their own counterattack going. Missed time. It would have been offside on the play. Let's see what YMCA were able to do here now on another counterattack. Can they find that goal that they have somehow not been able to find? Saluted them for this long. Chance pass in front does not go. Another chance in front just wide to the post. And I think Biltz up got a piece of that. And what a save that could go down to be. Yeah, and that came again from, I mentioned it a little bit. Well, I have to hold that thought here. JM not able to get that pass from Timothy, but they're still fighting for it. Seeley holding on to it well, though. Great job there by the defenseman, taking his time. No need to rush, playing the game at his pace. Tonski sending it around. Again, down low for Sada Poika, the double team there, but great job on the other side. The YMCA to slow things down. Turnover here, though. On Kuru able to knock that one loose at center ice. And a pass over once more here. JM looking, goes back to Kuru. Now over to Wenger, has a couple of options, but look to step in and run straight in the Migo Buna. And Roots trying to slow it down, turn over here, shot over, blocked down in front. Again, YMCA unable to find the back of the net. It is unbelievable how many opportunities they've had, but they haven't been able to find a single goal thus far as Migo Buna tried to walk his way through for Roots. This one's going to go all the way down for an icing. 
with 11-16 remaining here in regulation. Bit of a surprising icing call right there as it did kind of go through a couple bodies there on its way back down. But as I was going to mention earlier, YMCA sometimes on these breakouts and break-ins again, you know, starting to second-guess themselves, hesitating. You know, you had an open pass, he hesitated a bit, went to someone else, they got stopped at the blue line. It's just, it just, uh, it's, it's so, I feel for YMCA. That's all I'm going to say. I mean, it's just, they got to be so frustrated right now. In the back in possession here, following a really good block from Adel Kuru. Space here for Timothy. He lost it, trying to go to the near post. Still in. Banger throws a backhand on. Kick save once again by Kazu. Big stretch pass. Tata Poika has a step. Toe drag. Can't get it to go. And there's going to be a delayed call here. Finn Roof going to the power play. Not sure who it is there. It looks like Kopi Playa Kobe. going to yeah. the block. And a huge chance here for Roots. Not what you needed in the aftermath of a strong play to take away a strong opportunity. This is a chance for Roots to really seal the deal here. Sin, you talked about it in the pregame of the first game, but a big stretch pass here finds its way to JM. Tries the very creative pullback. Is not able to find his way through, but great pressure here shorthanded. You talked about it, the advantage on the power play for Roots versus a struggling PK for YMCA. This could be the chance that Roots needs to shut this down, but Sin, we're seeing it here from YMCA. They're trying to be aggressive on this kill. They have to be. I mean, they, they really have no other options. They're not very good in their own end on the penalty kill so far, so why not? Again, loose puck there. Viltz up able to friend that one off. But again, Root's still in on the attack until then. And finds a bit of jam. He sends it all the way down. And it's nearly in. That was a very odd cover from Kazu. Nearly own goal. The so Roots, uh, if anything, survived their own power play there. You'd argue the best chance. Going to YMCA off that very weird bounce, and here they are. Back in on the attack, shot on, blocker save there. Kobe not able to bury that one. Looked like he had a little bit of space there, just a reactionary save from Kazu. As again, we see the dump and chase here on the other side, but it's mistimed offside with 4.56 to go. Then I can't believe it's still a one to nothing score. Yeah, and a bit surprised that that play actually went back to the blue line. I thought it might have been ruled a purpose offside right there and, you know, go back towards the end of Roots, but it didn't. But it might not matter. YMCA getting that puck right back in, but offsides themselves. That looked good to me, as he obviously is. I completely missed the offside call. But, yeah, it's just if you're YMCA, less than five minutes now. Now it's crunch time, and it just gets more and more difficult from here on out. Roots with the puck off the draw. Sada Poika will send it down low. Amigo Buna lets it go and gets the defensive switch here. Not able to get a hold of that one. It goes all the way back to Tonski. We'll pick it up. Good movement here again, though, by the wingers in front. One punch out all the way back into the neutral zone. Roots still in on the attack, trying to find the goal that would seal the deal. Here in this one, now with two and a half remaining. But here come YMCA, desperate for that goal. Timothy gets it down low in the corner. Has a couple options. Kuru back for Timothy. Tried to again find Kobe. Just not able to get that one to go. Kuru in front. Big save there. His biggest of the game. Kazu robbing JM from point blank range. That's exactly the chance that YMCA was looking for. Behind the net into the forward out front. Who has both options. Either far side or short side to shoot from. And Kazu swallowed it up. Timothy takes his time, shoots it just wide of the post there once more. Final minute of play, 52 seconds remaining here as Roots on the attack. Migo Buna in the corner circles out. Very agile, Bill. He draws the trip. Banger going to the box. And Sin, that might do it here. YMCA, worst case scenario, you're on the kill here in the final yeah. minute. That's really unfortunate and very unfortunate, especially if you're Vanger right there. That wasn't a bad poke. It just, you know, rotten luck on it. Oh, stretch back here, though. JM has to fend off a two-on-one situation. Can he do it? He can't. Bides time, though. Kuru testing the top shelf. Just doesn't go. What a glove save once more. Back to Kofi. Slap shot. The deflection doesn't work. Migo Buna all alone on the breakaway. He scores. Blocker side. Root take advantage on the power play. And barring a miracle sin, they will pull off the double and take all four points away from YMCA Esports. Yeah, and it's just beyond impressive. And if you're YMCA, beyond head scratching at this point, as you can see, Kofi even, you know, doing the fight. No one's going to, you know, take him up on that, I'm sure. But that's just the frustration level right there. You start spamming buttons if you've had you, just the, the games that YMCA have. And it's not even really their fault. I mean, they've had some rotten luck offensively. They just can't get it past Kazu. Let's see if he has a Tomsky kick save by Viltza. 
Back to back shutouts for Kazu. His first two shutouts in his elite division career. What a way to spend an afternoon here in the ECL elite division. Phenomenal stuff for Roots. And again, for the rookie goaltender in this division, so not a bad way to pick up your first two shutouts on the season and your first two career shutouts at that. Yeah, and pretty ridiculous. Some of those saves that he was making, I mean, they don't get too much more difficult than that. He just seemed to always be in position. He never panicked, never overslid, and his defense gave him that you know confidence to be able to be as precise as that. Whereas Sile Antonski did a tremendous job back there, and you know, same thing as we're seeing right here. Kuru, you know, banking on him sliding, you know, too far to the right. It just seemed like everything that YMCA had in mind. Kazu had an answer for, or, you know, the team had an answer for block shots. That, that one right there. Usually if you're Kopi, you shoot for the opposite side to catch him sliding. That time he went for that short side. He just, the aim was just slightly off. And you, you talked about it, the reactionary save from Kazu. It's just, I, I don't know exactly what went wrong for YMCA and why they didn't get a goal because they looked as if they should have had a couple in both of those games. They just, didn't go in credit to Kazu credit to roots gaming, but also what went wrong for YMCA. I really have no answers. Now we talk about this and where these two teams are, you know, YMCA heading into these two games, seventh place currently again out of 16, the top eight make the playoffs here in the elite division. YMCA were tied for fifth in terms of goals four, and they were shut out in back to back games by Roots, who in fairness, Sin, uh, did have a top four uh, goals against average, or at least top four in terms of the uh, least amount of goals allowed heading into this game. So really, it was a battle of the defense versus the offense. And Sin, in this one, the defense uh, managed to win out. Roots taking all four points away from YMCA. Now, again, Sin, we have a couple of things to talk about before we wrap this up and take a quick break heading into our second series. Again, don't go anywhere. The action not done here on this broadcast. Uh, but when it comes to YMCA, I mean, Sin, I think we can both agree. You know, you just kind of take those two games, just ditch it, try to forget about today, yeah. go back, you know, yeah, use this as a learning experience. But in terms of being like, well, this was nice and this was nice, it's a little bit tough to look at that when you get shut out two times in a row. Obviously, we could talk about, well, the offense looked nice at certain points. But for them, I think uh, even they would agree, just let's let's just move on past this as soon as we can. But for Roots, we talked about it. Two games at hand on most teams, and what a way to use uh, these next two games that they had, taking all four points. The offense, despite some of the changes to the lineup, looking extremely potent at times. Yeah. Defensively, Sile and Tonsky were fantastic for the most part. And then Kazu as well, like we said, a rookie goalie stepping up from last season in the pro division. So one step down, but he takes the step up to the big division. And I mean, what a fantastic job he did today. Yeah, we're getting another look at what, what happened when Tonski threw that puck in front. It looks like it just kind of skipped over the stick of Viltzup, which I guess counted as possession for the game, which is why there's no assist on that one. But yeah, you mentioned it. I mean, Roots Gaming, an impressive performance. If you're YMCA, you came in today with a winning record, 5-3-2. and two, You are now 500, 5-5-2, five, five, and two, just like that. All it yeah. takes is two bad games. And it's so unfortunate for them, especially when you look at the fact they couldn't get any goals. And if you're Roots, I mean, you're now 6-3-1. and one. Mm. Right I mean, we'll hope, you to, wanna be. we'll hope to get you an updated look at the standings a little bit later on in this broadcast. Like I just said, though, don't go anywhere. We will be back after a very brief intermission. Two more games coming up for you in this broadcast. It was entering today, at least the sixth seed in H Reds going up against the eighth seed right now in Fariastad. Two very intriguing teams coming off of two uh, separately intriguing uh, prior weeks here to set the stage for this one we have a lot to talk about we'll be back in just a few minutes don't go anywhere sour cream snacks yeah flaming hot snacks snacks
And we are back. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with us. My name is Tukey, of course, joined, as always, by my broadcast partner, Sin. One series in the books. Still got another one to cover here again. ECL Elite Division Season 11, brought to you by the Wilhelm Sin. A very interesting start there between YMCA Esports and Ruth Gaming. But now we shift our attention over to a battle between two pretty well-established teams now in the Elite Division at this stage. It is H-Reds and Firestad, two teams that entered today on the inside of the playoff structure. Not exactly uh, either team really struggling for points at this stage, both with five wins through their first 10 games. So a decent point pace at this stage, of course, in a very, very competitive elite division. we got a lot to talk about, of course, getting into this one. And, of course, like I mentioned uh, just before the break, uh, we want to get you a look at some of the latest results here and the updated standings as well. So let's bring you over to that here with those latest results. Again, for those of you that were here with us in that first series, you had Roots Gaming pulling off the double over YMCA Esports, outscoring them 7 to nothing over the course of those two games. An unbelievable turn of events at that time. And Sin, of course, on the flip side there, you see some of the other results that have gone down. Pretty good day for Vesa Pompa, picking up four points over Dark Horse. Yeah, absolutely. And Vesa Pompa just continues to, you know, shoot their way up the standings. They've been incredibly impressive so far. The growth from last season to this season, huge. And another big four points. I mean, I think they're right up there in that top three right now, if I'm not mistaken. And again, we'll get a look at the updated standings here in a moment. I would say as well, Philadelphia, our number one seed entering today, picking up the double over Northern Ascendancy, but those games very close. One goal game for both, as you see there at the, you know, as you get a look at the updated standings, Philadelphia, of course, on 12 games played at this point, our defending champions in Havu, who of course beat Philadelphia in the finals last year. Not all that far behind, uh, not all that far behind, but sitting, like you said, Vesa Pompa shooting up the standings currently in third. It has been an unbelievable turnaround for them. And of course, I'd love to be able to sit here and talk about their story. Of course, Root's an interesting story. Sim, we thought they might jump up to fifth. They are currently in fourth. So, again, the storylines, the constantly evolving uh, situation here, of course, you want to find yourself on the left-hand side of the standings in one of those eight playoff spots come the end of the season. But as you see there, the two teams that are highlighted are the two teams that you'll see in action here in just a few moments. It is H-Reds and it is Faryastad, which brings us to our individual, uh, or really let's get you a look at the team matchups here before we get a look at the individual lineups as again. We have Faryastad and Hreds and Sin. A lot of interesting things to talk about here with these two teams. Uh, before we get into that, though, of course, you see the records there at the bottom. Last week, Sin, a rough week for Faryastad. They split that two-game series against Vesa Pampa. They were swept by Havu, and then they split a series against Northern Ascendancy that uh, we were able to cover here, if I'm not mistaken. They started the season 4-1. and one. They've gone 1-3-1 one, and one since, so... A very important two games here for Faryastad against H-Reds, who are, you know, coming off of a pretty good week, all things considered. They swept the Gotham Knights. They were swept by Yippie Voskala, though, but overtime losses in each of those. Then they split a series against Conquer Gaming. So, you know, you, you look at those points for H-Reds that they might have dropped off the table. It could be costly, but at the end of the day, they're still in a good situation here heading into this matchup. With those team stats, though, what stands out to you before we get into the individual breakdowns? Yeah, well, you know, just to touch on a little bit more about Atreds, when we got to cover that series of between them and Yippie Voskala, you know, it was kind of like, you know, similar to the YMCA series versus, uh, I'm um, sorry, Roots game that we just saw where, you know, H-Reds had so many chances, all these chances to come ahead and they just couldn't get the job done. So they're definitely going to have their work cut out for them once again, going against the Faryastad team here who has a very impressive defense. So I'm going to be, you know, really interested to see how that plays out. But I mean, the 100% penalty kill from Faryastad, it just, it continues to stand out to me just how much their defense has improved from last season to this season, including their playoff performance from last year when it just seemed to just do a complete 180 and all of a sudden, they were shutting down the top team in Yippie Voskala. Definitely one of the main talking points that we'll have for Faryastad here leading into the series is the change that we have seen from that team over the back half of 2020. Let's get you a look here at the lineups here for these two teams. For Faryastad, we see Afe, Malin, and Antonio Mananen. Mananen, 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 Mananen. 
I always have trouble with that name. We call him Antonio. Why? Because I struggle with it. A dynamite front three, though, up top, certainly capable of putting up the points. And, of course, defensively, it's Furion and Arubates. And, of course, between the pipes, as always, Mick Saban, perhaps the best name in the elite division. On the flip side for eight treads, we see Yoki, Benito, and Nicky Dangles. King of Apes on defense alongside Tamu and Fincona between the pipes. Sin... Two very uh, capable offenses here, all things considered. Although Faryastad, of course, as we talked about, that change in their attack. But, you know, we talked about it there too. A team that likes to score first, and if they do, capable of shutting you down defensively. Yeah, and we, you know, with Faryastad's, you know, more more emphasis on on defense, that first goal becomes oh so important. And you know, they're doing less of the counterattacks, less of those stretch plays. And on the flip side, Hreds probably not super happy with some of their latest results. They're going to be incredibly hungry, looking to you know come alive here. Is you know, Nikki Dangles tied for third in goals. You know, a prolific goal scorer, Yoki. I mean, there's so many weapons on both of these teams from the on the forward end, but and both of them incredibly capable defensively as well indeed let's get into our individual breakdowns here of course as we continue to set the stage between two games between again h reds and a fire stat we start off of course with the center of battle as we have the captain of h reds it is a benito going up against the former misa now known as Malin. and you know sin again certainly uh, both capable of putting up points for their two teams two of the better uh, face-off men as well in the elite division yeah, we always like to touch on those face-offs. So with, you know, an even matchup like this, it's really going to come down to, you know, those high percentage face-offs. But yeah, Benito's numbers, 21 points in 10 games played. When a center is averaging two points per game, you know they are dangerous. And H-Red's dangerous all over the place offensively. But when you have a center, you know, putting up comparable numbers to your wingers, you know you've got something special. Absolutely. Benito right now tied, at least heading into today, tied for eighth in scoring amongst forwards. So as Sid mentioned, uh, certainly off to a very, very good start offensively. We move over to the battle of the wingers for Faryastad. We see the one and the only. It is Afe alongside one Antonio Manamana. And on the flip side for H-Reds, it is Yoki and the uh, really the young wonder kid here of the elite division it is nikki dangles off to a very impressive start in the goal scoring category uh yoki uh, as well looking uh, pretty good there in terms of the assist a true dynamic duo there for h reds yeah and if you're aware of the kind of hunger that nikki dangles had you know he wants more out of had of himself he's expecting a bit more out of himself he had such a good breakout year last year really you know jumped onto the scene here and we've been you know wondering is he going to be able to build on this will he build on it and you know he's He's doing pretty good so far, but I know, you know, in his own mind, he probably thinks he could be doing better. So look to him to really start to step things up. On the flip side, it's kind of, you know, uh, you know, Afe and, you know, Antonio, both incredibly dangerous. One, the setup guy, won the goal scorer there, but, you know, almost half the amount of points, respectively, um, against Yoki and Nikki Dangles. And you could just see, like, that's, you know, you know, sort of, sort of a symptom of just how much their, you know, emphasis they're putting on defense this year. Absolutely. And again, we talked about it too. You know, both of them using smaller builds. Antonio Manon moving up from defense last year, playing forward this season. And it really has contributed to those defensive improvements for the team. And speaking of which, we'll move over to the defensive outlook here. As again, for Firestab, we see Furion and Arubitas. On the flip side, it's King of Apes and Tamu. But Sin, I mean, unlike on the previous battle with the wingers, of course, where it was a little bit one-sided, all four of these guys capable of putting up points. Although, you know, I think the key matchup might be Fury and King of Apes. Three goals each of the 10 games, very impressive for defensemen. Yep, absolutely. And that's the kind of, you know, the advantage of the left defense. That seems to be the spot where a lot of goals come from, especially this year in NHL 21, when you can sneak them into that, you know, high slot area. And King of Apes, Furion, both not afraid to shoot the puck. They both like to shoot the puck. They both like creating that offense. We've seen King of Apes at times really almost take over the game and be in a really good game changer for his team, which is, you know, a really excellent weapon that, that H-Reds have in their back pocket with such a strong front three. And with that, let's move over to the battle of the goaltenders. Again, puck drop just a few moments away here. So we'll try to get you uh, through these keys and everything as quickly as we uh, possibly can. It is McSavid for Firestad against Fincona. Uh, Sin all in all, two very competent goaltenders 
who, you know, at this stage, I mean, it's tough to say both would want to step up their game, but the thing is we know both can step up their game. Just a matter of whether or not they can get that, uh, you know, that, that right foot forward here out of the gates in this matchup. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're looking for that one game changer, I think you got to look for Mick Saban, who, you know, just seems in big moments to step up for his team. And when, you know, the name change happened, I'll mention this again. I'm sure half the people out there thought he was trolling. And just with a serious look on his face, he said, no, this is my name now. And he's come out here and he's had, you know, he's done a great job so far. Maybe the save percentage, not where he wants it to be, but we've seen just ridiculous saves come out of him. Absolutely. So with that, let's bring it over to the keys to success. The three keys for these two teams are going to start off with a treads on this one. And Sin, you know, it's one of the things we've kind of talked about at this point. Uh, right now, the number one thing they would probably want consistency. They are tied for the third best offense heading in to this matchup today. They have the high end players. And really, you know, as we talked about only winning five out of their last 10, we expect a little bit more from this team. Uh, they made it pretty far into the playoffs last season. Second point here, the self-inflicted wounds, part of the consistency issues. It's the penalty minutes taken, and we saw that in our last matchup here. You know, penalty minutes being a really big factor. Hreds, 28 penalty minutes, the third highest amount in the league. That is equal to the total amount of penalty minutes taken by Havu, Vesa Pampa, and their opponents today in Faryastad combined. They have as many penalties as three top teams combined and even though they've killed off 12 out of 14 chances and have a tremendous penalty kill, that's a lot of time spent in your own end and not as much time on offense, which really that front three can deliver if you give them that extra time. So the key here, Sin, is to strike first. And we've talked about this, being able to cover Farius out a decent amount so far this year. They have had trouble playing from behind the season. You get that first goal against Faryastad, take them out of their comfort zone. It could be smooth sailing for H Reds. Sin, what do you have here for Faryastad? again, quickly before getting into this matchup. Yeah, well, first and foremost, bizarro world. I mean, it's we talk about it all the time when we cover Faria Stad. They flipped from last year. Last year, they were no more than an offensive team uh, than a defensive team. This season, complete opposite. More of a defensive team, less offensive output. Their goal per game is worse, worse by half a goal than last season, but the goals against has improved by over a goal per game. So really, we're still trying to figure out who is this team? Is this the new identity? Second uh, point here is can't stop, won't stop. 11 out of the team's 18 goals have come from Afe. That's just over 60% of the team's goal. He's a scary forward. You know, others are going to have to take the pressure off him because if you're an opponent of Faristad, if you shut down Afe, that's over half of the offensive output of Faristad that you have shut down. Last but not least here is impressive aggression. Fifth in hits, yet the fewest penalties taken this season. Only four, as I recall, and they've killed every single one of them off. Discipline makes them a difficult team to play against. So again, some very interesting things to look out for here. As you can see on your screen, just seconds away from puck drop here. The first game of two between Faryastad and Atreds. And of course, in so many talking points, we could sit here and set the stage for these games for longer than the games themselves. And that's the one thing that I love about these games that we get to cover. You know, it's not just as simple as uh, some people wish it could be. Just be like, this team plays this team and that's it. There's yeah. a lot to talk about. The minutia, I suppose you could say, of an individual matchup makes these games so much more interesting. Uh, I know for a fact to speak for you, but for you and I to call, it makes it that much more interesting. Sin, is it as simple to say that the first team who scores here uh, could very well win? Because as we mentioned, Faryastad struggling if they don't get that first goal. Atreds get that first goal, maybe pedal to the metal. I think it's not as cut and dry as that, although that's, you know, a very, you know, a good, a good point that you made right there. But when you think of King of Apes, uh, especially, you know, at times, if he's going to be thinking that offensively, maybe he gets caught up the ice. And if he does, we know how far you said can make you pay with those slap pass plays. So I think this is a very interesting matchup in the fact that even if H Red goes ahead, Faryastad still are going to have some chances to come back. So a missed time dump and chase play there. Of course, Faristad in the white and green going south to north on AOR screen. H Reds surprisingly in the red. Sin, it makes no sense to me, but <laughs> hey, you can have your your appearance be what you want to be. It is your team after all. Again, the first game of two here in these regular season matchups. The two teams definitely looking to find their way 
on the inside of the playoff structure. But both teams in. Now, this is what we were talking about. We didn't really see this with YMCA uh, and with Roots. But right now, you know, the, the neutral zone battle, that fade, you know, that feeling out process that we get mm -hmm. for the first five to ten minutes or so, uh, much more prevalent so far here in this game. Chance here down low now. Worked back to the point. King of Apes, dangerous. Again, we talked about the defensive battle and the goal-scoring chances between him and Fury, and both tied for the league lead with three goals amongst defensemen here for the early stages of this season. Atreids back in on the attack, or at least looking to get something going. Tamu's going to walk this one in. Now along the half wall, there's a couple of options. Alex to go down low. Cycle back out and a chance there. Still on the near post. Just not able to find a way to the back of the net. Pass there from King of Apes. A little bit off the mark. Let's see what Faryastad can do in response. But Sin, so far you see it. Tamu all over Afe on the left side of your screen. Trying to shut down that speedy build. As Malin tries to throw it off of the deflection. Just can't find its way off the stick of Antonio. Let's see what Atred's now able to do in response. This game opening up a little bit here in the first period. It'll send that possession didn't exactly last too long for Atred's. No, not that time. And, you know, if you're far sad, that's what you want to do. Try to shut them down quick. A rough turnover right there, but they do do a good job of collapsing on the puck carrier. And if I get a moment here, I'd like to talk about Afe, probably the only one in the ECL using a sniper build. And that, in turn, gives him a bit less possession. But he seems to be a guy that colors outside the lines with how small it is. We're going to see. That's probably why, you know, contributing factor to, to why he has 11 goals. But as I mentioned, in a puck possession style, at least what most teams go for. It's interesting to see a sniper build coming out here. Chance here for Atreds. Loose puck thrown in front. Poked away. Second chance. They just can't pull the trigger. Both wingers kind of getting caught up in each other's skates there. Atreds still in possession, though. King of Apes down low for Yoki. Now to Nikki Dangles. Yoki draws the trip. It's going to be Malin taking a seat to center, going to the box. And a huge chance here for Atreds on an early power play. Yeah, this is a good chance for them to kind of get going here and maybe hand Fari said the first oh, shorthanded goal again. A big set play there for Atreds, just not working out. And we see that from a lot of the top teams. Uh, those well timed, well crafted face off plays that can certainly make a difference. But Fari Stapp were able to survive that one. So we have Benito here. Quick cycle work finds its way in front. Nikki Dangle still fighting for it. Backhand shot. And McSavid is there. To make the stop a little bit of a little bit of a dance in front there following the save then. Yep, Nicky Dangle's not sure if he's congratulating him on the save or saying, I should have had you, I'll get you next time, but either way, he'll have another chance here off the faceoff. Untie up there. Atred's able to come up with it. Nicky Dangles for Yoki. Tried to feed Benito across. He has it down low. Couple of options. Tried to feed it back in front. Sim, we see that play so often uh, somehow trying to get that pure uh, north south pass. Didn't really work out there. We uh, apologize for any uh, technical interruptions here. Doing the best we can with the setup. And speaking of doing the best with the setup, what a save by McSavid. Keeping this deadlocked at zero. Atred's not able to get a follow-up opportunity, although maybe I spoke too early. Slap shot brought down. Yoki not able to get that one through. And that was a fantastic save there to keep this scoreless. Yeah, Nick Save it just moving so well with the uh, with the recipient of that pass, which was Nikki Dangles. Once again, stymied on a chance, and you know, very good job from McSavid early, preventing you know his team from going behind. But if you're if you're Farius out here, you got to start looking for a few more offensive chances. Right now, Hred's starting to build the momentum, starting to get more and more time in that offensive end, and that's where they are so so dangerous. Do see Farius that as a counter attacking team. Here's Malin dishing it back down to the point. Now they work, Barry said, trying to get something going, but right now, Atred's defense on point. The first 16 and a half minutes or so here of this first period is seeing to see uh, the incredibly small build of Ape. Like you said, that sniper build, but uh, surprisingly able to throw the body. He gets stick with it there, though. Atred's in on the attack. Tamu throws one on. Second chance for Nicky Dangles, but he elects not to shoot. See now what Barry's dad can do in response. Rubita stepping up with his two wingers. Down low for Antonio. Opportunity slap shot. Burian just not able to hit the target there. Looking to take the sole possession of goal scored amongst defensemen. Final minute of play here. Malin has it for Faryastad. Tried to throw one on. It's knocked down in the skates. Second chance. Off a throw it across. Not able to find Antonio. One-timer from the point. Does not go. 
for Ethereum, and that will bring us to the end of the first period. So, Sin, a very good start there for Atred. They can't find the goal. Firestyle battling back in a strong way. Close out that first period. Yeah, and that's what makes Faristad so scary is that you know, they got McSavid back there who seems to make saves that he, you know, quote unquote, shouldn't make. And then on the flip side, Faristad, they kind of, you know, start out an offensive zone, you know, pressure with it doesn't look too scary. And then all of a sudden there's two, three chances in front of the net. They just seem to almost come out of nowhere at you, even when they're already in your zone. It's just their offensive so is so deceptive at times. It can throw you for a loop, but uh, right there, unable to capitalize on it. Uh, and surprisingly, no registered shots, but even though they had those chances, so they just kind of, you know, skittered wide or the shot was blocked or they didn't quite connect on it. Still dangerous though. And if you're eight dreads, especially if you're Finn Kona back there, sometimes you want to get that first aid, even, even if it's just one because you see that zero in the registered shot column you kind of get nervous you still have the you know one shot one goal uh, thing hanging over your head and there it is and i was hoping i can't believe that wasn't labeled as the save of the period you get another look there at that big save by mcsavid to keep this one deadlocked as we mentioned scoreless at this stage second period though underway Let's see if we can get that opening goal like we said uh, crucial for a treads to get that opening goal to try and drag Faryastad out of this new defense first mentality Looked up to it at certain points off a the big poke check small sniper or not has the ability to knock him loose goes over to the winger tried to go back but antonio not able to find the pass now on the flip side nikki dangles all alone gets poked away antonio making the play not able to find the pass on the offensive side thing on the offensive side of things sin but the former defenseman still able to help cover and an interesting play there is going to be offside uh sin great chances for both teams here to start yeah. the second love to see it off a tremendous stick to you know break things up and had a chance it was i think it was Tamu back there who slid on his belly and sort of you know prevented that cross crease going uh from uh off a back to antonio and then on the flip side it was nikki dangles in there on the breakaway and i like what mcsava did he came out to challenge but also the it kind of, you know, fakes that flying poke check. It makes the winger, you know, kind of think again. And that slight bit of hesitation allowed the Far East Dead back checkers to break it up. Yoki finds this one. Holds on to it. Cuts all the way across the crease. No space there, though. McSavid able to track him well. Sin, it always feels like we hype him up a little bit too much and like we're playing favorites. But you can see just really the fundamentals of the goaltending position on point for the man between the pipes for Far East Dead. We're back in possession here now. Mullen's going to send this one down. He's going to risk it. Antonio going to win the race, but cut out quickly by King of Apes. Great job there to recover by the H Reds defenseman as they'll look to slow things down here once more through the neutral zone. Space for Tamu, never afraid to step up. Not able to find the space on that attempt. This pass off the boards. Afe not able to hold on to it. King of Apes doing a great job shutting him down. End to end plays here. This will go down for Rising. Then these two teams more than willing to throw unorthodox looks at one another to try and get the space. Yeah, speaking of unorthodox, you know who was trying to chase that puck down? Tamu, the defenseman. <laughs> I mean, you never know what you're going to see here, right? I mean, we yeah, saw it in the last game, though, with the uh, the big step up by Tonski for Roots. So we know that the defensemen are more than capable of scoring. Hell, sometimes then we see it, uh, some of the more you know dominant Versus players, especially on the uh, North American side of things, not afraid to play defense in competitive sixes. So just because someone plays defense doesn't mean they're not capable offensively as Nicky Dangles hits the side of the net there. Atred's getting a little bit of offensive zone time. Still has it down low in front. Tried to find Benito. But a great job there by Furian and Rubitas to help out their goaltend. Yep, and good job stepping out of the crease just a little bit by McSavid to get that cover, guarantee the stoppage of play, giving uh, Mullen a chance to win this face off here. And the tie-up goes the way of Faryastad. More than halfway through this game already. Still looking for our first goal of this contest. Faryastad willing to take their time. There's the nice switch on the dump and chase. But again, King of Apes reading it incredibly well. Sim, we pondered uh, when King of Apes stepped into their lineup in the last postseason, just how well he'd be able to do defensively. We knew he was capable of putting up the points offensively, but this is probably the most comfortable I've seen him look in his own zone so far this season in the games that we've been able to call for H Reds. But Farius that in on the attack here for the moment. That quickly goes away. Sin, your thoughts on King of Apes? 
I mean, yeah, you, you said it exactly there. He's doing a much better job of picking the moments where he gets involved offensively. Ooh, rough pass right there from Mon leads to another turnover. We step in here, Tamu gets it in front. The backhand from Yoki doesn't go. McSaven able to keep Faryastad very much in this one. They're right on the counter attack here. Antonio from Malin around the back. It's Afe has a couple of options. The defenseman pinching and it's Rubitus. We'll take a trip back to the point. Faryastad slowing things down here. Chance here. Loose puck is recovered. Rubitus back down low. Good movement. Malin just not able to make the follow up play there. It's Tamu, I believe, able to help shut things down. The pass across, just not able to find this way to Nikki Dangles. And here comes Faryastad, two and a half to go. Malin and ends up back with Rubitas. One timer for Fury and just wide of the post. Yet again, chance from an odd angle. Malin not able to find the back of the net either. And here come H Reds with a little bit of speed. The spin, the loose puck in front doesn't go. Fury and ended up on the floor. Final 50 seconds of play here in the second period. Both teams. So close to finding that opening goal. Fury, and it ends up all the way packed down and around. An extremely odd bounce there. Five seconds to play, and Faryastad will wind down the clock. Sin, that was a bizarre yep. you know, way to end the second period, I think. <laughs> yeah. Just yeah. Wait for the it really started to open up there, which of course is just exciting hockey. You love to watch it in any setting, but especially when, when the players are this talented, everyone on the ice, it's really fun to watch things open up and for the systems to sort of go out the window and everyone just trying to get that next chance. It's really exciting. But yeah, for those maybe watching, wondering what happened there is occasionally, if you uh, are making a certain type of pass and someone is, you know, maybe poke checking at the same time can create a very odd bounce that shoots across the ice in record speed. But oh my goodness, Faryastad still without a registered shot, which is just goes to show you what they're looking for in the way of chances is those high percentage ones. They've gotten some good looks. Credit to H Reds, and I want to touch again on you know as the pace picked up so quick, I you know had to stop my thought short about King of Apes, but you know we've seen him. We, as you mentioned, we know we could do offensively, but he's done a great job of sort of, you know, coming into his own defensively. He did have that play where he got kind of danced um, <laughs> on, on a highlight reel play, you know, back and forth that led to a big goal. And ever since then, it seems like he's had a chip on his shoulder defensively, got chirped a bit, you know, some GIF comments from some of the top players in this division. And you mentioned it, he looks very comfortable in his own end, making the smart and simple plays on the breakout and defensively retrieving those pucks on the attempted dump and chase. So really good two-way game coming out from King of Apes. On the pass over, loose puck still there, McSavid. Able to make yet another stop. And that point about King of Apes, we could call it uh, Tony D'Angelo-esque defense, which is not a compliment in the <laughs> slightest. I think the only way it could be more insulting is if you call it Tony D'Angelo-esque tweeting. But we'll leave it at that. Faryastad back in possession here. Early stages of this third period as Mollen gets it down the wall. The attempted spin from Antonio doesn't find its way through and a pass back to the point. Does not go as McDavid will try to send this out to a winger. He wasn't there, though. They tried to back in possession now, but Mullen, good poke check. Faryastad quickly back in control here, but for how long? Furian stepping up, tries to throw it in front. Loose puck still fighting for it oh. on the line. Will it find its way home? It won't. Atreds able to recover around the back of their own goal. Huge opportunity there. See the dump in from King of Apes. Nicky Dangles trying to chase it down, and he does. Back to Apes at the point, throws it across. Nicky Dangles on the buffer shot. Not the break he was looking for there. Faryastad back in control. Yeah, and on that last break in that Faryastad had that led to the chance, it all started with a silky saucer pass from Mullen. It was such a controlled sauce. Doesn't always have to be hard. He threaded it right to the right air to send Furion in on the break in. Rubitas, D to D. I know Furion's going to look for those passes, or for the shots, I should say. Gets it back to Rubitas, D to D again, looking for space. Mullen just not able to get that pass through. A little bit of trouble, good layers in defense there for H Reds. See what they can do on the counterattack here. King of Apes, the defenseman stepping up, has some space, but can't get the pass down low. Great job by, again, the former defenseman and Antonio Manamana. Uh, and here he is once more on the rush. And looks like he's using a slightly bigger build, perhaps, than we've seen him use. That earlier stage is Afe on the doorstep. Just not able to get that one to go through. But Antonio right now is a menace trying to shut down these counterattacking opportunities for H-Reds. But they do send it around. 
quickly taken away by Furian one more time. Sin, just nine minutes left here in regulation, still looking for our first goal. We might see it here, actually. We'll have to cut you off one more time. Mullen poked away there by Nikki Dangle. Sin, one of these days, when I tried to set you up to get a word, and that's why it'll actually happen, as this one is blocked down. Here's Antonio one more time, really stepping up his physical presence here in this third period, Sin. Yeah, well, when you have a game with Faryastad in it, it just, you know, I'm just going to have to have a bone to pick with them. I think they don't like color commentators. Every time I'm about to make a point, they have another break going the other way as they're starting right here to get some more pressure. We'll see if it amounts to anything. But Hred's doing the doing a good job of sort of adjusting and playing this, you know, the same way that Faryastad's kind of forcing them into. First of speed for Rafe, not able to hold on to it. Furian shot, chance there, thrown back in front. And Rafe trying to find Antonio Man and just not able to find the space, just over four and a half minutes remaining now. First goal could very well be the winner. Chance here for Yoki. Sends off the pressure and sends it around all the way to the point. Temu tried to step in. Great job once more by Mullen and again, Sin. You know, you talked about it in terms of defensive ability. Two teams uh, within the top half of the bracket in terms of allowing the fewest goals against. And we really do see why. At this stage, as Malin, the toe drag, just runs out of space through the double coverage. Now it's just down to two minutes. H Reds, let's see what they can do. Chance here for Tamu. Ends up getting it to Nikki Dangles. Tried to throw it back in front. An incredible chess match between two of the better defenses in the elite division here in season 11. They missed time that dump and chase. Antonio Manning will touch up, but he will be offside with 56 to go. Yeah, and you can uh, you mentioned about Antonio's build. I think he's using a similar build to what he's used before. It does look a bit biller, but I actually think it's Mollen who's using a slightly smaller center build than we're accustomed to seeing you know, here in the ECL. You can see him right next to Benito right there. You know, the size difference is is just, I mean, pretty massive when it comes to centers. One of the things we've talked about, too, as well, a big chance here for Rafe, though, perhaps. He'll drop back. Again, back down low now from Mullen. Has a couple of options. You see the heavy collapse from H Reds. Mullen not able to hold on to it in his rifle pack. All the way back to the fire stat zone. Sin, it's something that we've talked about. Uh, remind me to touch up upon it a little bit later on. I don't think we'll have time. But the way that the game is handing out badges now, uh, you know, the unlocks throughout the seasons also could have an effect on how we see things play out. As they see it, we've talked about it a lot. NBA style, basketball style. Wind down that shot clock. Make sure you get the final chance. Here comes Faryastat. Rubitas not able to hold on to it. It's recovered here by Antonio. And Hreds will take us to sin. Both teams here in game one walking away with at least one point. We will go to overtime. Unbelievably, Sin. I don't remember the last time we saw this. Scoreless. Through yeah. 60. I mean, especially with two teams with this kind of offense. But you just, just go to show you they were both... When we, when we talked about that feeling out process in the beginning, I think they, I'm not going to say afraid, but I think they were both a little apprehensive, but for different reasons. I think Atrez was apprehensive knowing the quick strike ability of Faryastad, and Faryastad was apprehensive just because they, you know, have been, you know, have so much emphasis on the defensive end of things, and they didn't want to let Atrez sort of set up that cycle there, and... After that, when things kind of broke down, we saw some back and forth action. Both goaltenders stood tall. Only two registered shots for a um, for uh, sorry for Faryastad throughout that entire game. Both of them coming in the third period. They did get some good in tight chances. We saw right there, and just everyone swinging at it. Who is that number thirty three? That would be Afe just missing the goal. That would have held up to be to have been the game winner. But as it stands right now, both of these teams who are in a playoff position secure a point. Which one will get the extra one here in overtime? I guess we'll find out as Puck Jock hits us. Here we go. Hreds win that opening draw. Next goal will earn that extra point for their team. Again, both of these teams in a playoff position entering today's contest. We saw Faryastad knocked down to ninth heading into this game, though. Mollin on the back has been not able to do it. Of course, it was a great afternoon for Roots. Putting the pressure on someone like Faryastad. Throwing across just doesn't find its way to Yoki. Has it back down low, though. Gets it up to King of Apes at the point. Let's see what he looks to do. Stepping in. Loose puck in front. What a chance for Nikki Dangles. Just not able to sweep that one in. Apes one more time. Swings it down low for Yoki. And again back to King of Apes. Slap shot from Tamu. Found its way through. Nearly beat him five hole, but McSavid was there. Here's Antonio Madden looking for space. Drops back. Great passing work here. Antonio tried to pick the corner short side. 
Just not able to hit the target. Baryastad providing some pressure of their own on the flip side. Rubitas doesn't shoot often and dishes it down low. They have it back in front. Loose puck thrown on and it's stopped by Fincona. Malin denied of his third goal of the season. And that was a sick sequence from Antonio there. He made the defensive play on one end, and that's where a lot of his value comes from, the intercept on the cross crease. And then we saw just how good he is offensively as well, using Afe as a decoy and then trying for that short side. It didn't work out for him that time, though. Yoki and Nicky Dangles able to time it well, but the pass is off the mark. Yoki still fighting for it. Nicky Dangles throws it back across, straight into the hands of Rubitas. Let's see what Firestad can do here. Quick passing work, great job there. Mullen draws the trip. Faryastad will take the man advantage. You see that McSavid going to the bench. Again, one of the big changes this year. Finally, goaltenders get to control the extra attacker. Let's see what they can do with McSavid out there. Arubatus. He goes to the front of the net. As you'd expect, loose puck in front. Nearly swept in by Afe. Faryastad and their sixth rated power play will go up against the fourth best penalty kill in the league, but a chance to end this game. Yeah, we'll see what happens here. Big face-off. Mullen needs to win this. He does. Chance here again. Benito, the other center on the other side in the box. Mullen has it. Behind the goal line once more. Loose puck is recovered. Nicky Dangles tried to find Yoki. Not able to do so. And here come Faryastad one more time. But Antonio forced to slow it down at the blue line. He gets it back here. The big spin. Opportunity. Sends it down low. Mullen. Again, has options. Antonio, what a pass over to Robitas, but it doesn't hit the mark. Great chance for Farris. Another chance doesn't go off the big interception from Nicky Dangles. Send tremendous puck work there. Farris still not able to find the back of the net, though. And that's a really good set play starting from behind the net. If at first you don't succeed, try again. It didn't go through that second time either, though. This is a tremendous intercept by, I believe it was uh, Nicky Dangles. Five on five there, and talking about interceptions, Rubitas cutting that pass out. So big chance for Faryastad, just not able to find the deciding goal. This one offside, 8.48 to go in OT1. Again, we go until there is a winner. Yeah, and it's uh, between these two teams, how they've played so far and how, you know, the way the goaltenders have played, it could be a long time despite all the chances we're seeing. Holland has it here. Fury and fakes the shot. Back down a little bit. Centerman tried to throw it in front. Nobody home. One of those plays, Sin, where you just hope someone's where you're expecting them to be as opposed to looking at what the situation actually was as Yoki able to find Benito here. The captain cycling back up to the top, but loses it. Antonio has it poked away by King of Apes. Here come Atreus one more time. Yoki shot on and a big stop there. No rebound, at least manageable for Nicky Dangles. As far as that, back in possession once more. 14 minutes gone in the overtime. Safe working along the half wall. A couple of quick passes and not what Furian was looking for on that attempt, I'm sure. The big stretch pass there off the mark. Big counterattacking opportunity. Yoki has it in front. Loose puck doesn't go. Another near turnover there for Faryastad. Need to do a better job here of tightening up. You know, really protecting that puck at a crucial point in time here. Again, next goal wins this game. Yeah, and it would have been a really rough sequence for Furion, who was responsible, you know, for that initial turnover. Then the slap all the way down created another chance. Nicky Dangles drops it back to his defenseman. In front, backhand scores! Yoki is the hero. He earns the extra point for H Reds. What a heartbreaker for Farias Dad, but Sin, they tried to find him on that backhand a couple of times in this game. They get him there. It's Yoki's seventh of the season. His first game winning goal of the season. And a big big moment there for Ray Trent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they really needed that, and they were putting a lot of pressure on Faryastad, as we're seeing Yoki got, you know, a more more one of the more favorable spinning backhand animations that you could get, allowing him to beat McSavid, who looked so good throughout that entire game, but when you have, you know, a zero position like that through all of it, you can only ask your goaltender to do so much, and we're sort of seeing you know, this this trend kind of developed from Faryastad. Well, yes, they've been so good defensively. McSavid's been so good. But, you know, they without that offensive out, output that they had last year, are they kind of a, you know, a this or that team? Can they find a way to get the balance and be able to score while also shutting things down defensively? And that one, not able to do it. 
and uh, only four registered shots. Usually not going to be enough. Impressive time on attack for both sides, but I'd honestly like to see a bit more a bit more shots out of both of them, but especially Faristad. They're trying to be, you know, maybe a bit too precise and a bit too cute on some of those plays, and while that may work, you still got to look at the fact of you're not scoring at the rate you scored at last year. Yeah, your defense is good, but if you don't score, you can't win. One goal decided this one, and it didn't go in your favor. Defensively, great game. Now you just need to put the puck in the net. So again, we have one more game coming up here in this broadcast. Of course, between these two teams, and we'll see how they respond. Not every day you have a one nothing final in an overtime game between teams of this skill level. But as Sin mentioned again, Atreds getting that one to nothing victory here. A lot of talking points, of course, in the aftermath of this one. And I do believe uh, we are set just about uh, to take a quick little break. We'll get you a quick word with our sponsor. We'll be back in five to ten seconds. Don't go anywhere. Why would you want to miss the second game between these two? But, but you do need to hear from our lovely sponsor at Wilhelm. Parasta purtavaa kauden kovimpiin koitoksiin. Sour cream snacks ja flaming hot snacks. Kotikatsomoissa mukana. Wilhelm snacksit. Hungry, aren't you? Mm-hmm. Aren't we all? You should be. Wilhelm Snacks. Get your hands on some if you can. Makes Sin and I very, very jealous, if you would. And, of course, uh, you know, feel free to interact with us on Twitter as well. Uh, not just, of course, with Sin and I. And you can see our handles uh, on, you know, on screen now. But, of course, at NHL Gamer on Twitter as well. And, you know, may let us know. Let us know if you try them. Make Sin and I jealous while we continue to to beg and plead for some samples here. This would be this would be lovely. We're being taunted. It's cruel and unusual punishment. Speaking of cruel and unusual punishment, teams not scoring goals. As Sin, three games out of three today, we have seen a team not score a goal. I don't know what's yeah. going on. It feels like opposite day. One of our keys. Heading into that first game was called Bizarro World, and I feel like today is just Bizarro World indeed because I don't know what's happening. We're, we're watching teams that have that offensive punch, and we're just not seeing it. Yeah, and you know what you meant you mentioned at the beginning is the team that scores first the one to win it. And I hesitated on that because like, yeah, maybe it's not that simple, but it literally was as simple as that. The first goal <laughs> was the last goal because it came in overtime. So we'll give you a push on that one. Not a clear victory, but I will I will, you know, you know, concede a bit of ground on that I'll one. I'll take what I can get. I'll take what I can get. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, if you're Faristad, you know, you have to I, I think, like I said, just take a few more shots. I mean, I love the system that they have in place, but I think just the slightest of adjustments need to be made. Now, we saw last year in the playoffs, they weren't too keen on making those adjustments. So maybe this year they'll be a bit more, you know, a bit more prevalent into that and maybe make a few more adjustments. We're getting a look at the builds. Look at H Reds, all about that puck possession. Only one playmaker, and it's the center. Everyone else, puck moving defenseman. Antonio mm -hmm. Manon, you know, no stranger to the puck moving defenseman. That's what he used, you know, for Vesa Pampa on the back end, as we so often see, you know. Um, and especially this year, I think we're going to see that puck moving defenseman even be more prevalent in North America. I'm actually starting to see them pop up on the forward end of things. But yeah, you touched on it a bit with the new badges being introduced. I think it's going to be great for esports. We're going to see an evolving meta throughout the course of the year. And I think it'll just, you know, keep keeping things fresh and keep things exciting, make those teams continue to have to adjust with the times. And, you know, more parity is never a bad thing. I mean, I think we need to see that. I mean, you know, despite despite my position at EA as a game changer, I, I you know can't help but think that they probably wouldn't approve of. Oh, here is the most competitive sixes league on the planet, and you have almost all but yeah, you have all but one skater using a puck moving defenseman. It's a very uh, very interesting look here. Speaking of interesting look, breakaway here, and it's off the post. What an opportunity early on there for Yoki. He ended the last one sin and nearly started the scoring off here. Yeah, and it was pretty well played by McSavit. He just got beat, but the uh, iron behind him, his best friend on that one, keeping it a 0-0 game. H-Reds again here in the white and red, unsurprisingly, against Far East. On the green, the wraparound bit for Yoki Sin. You can tell he's feeling it a little bit. He's got that momentum, that mojo going. 
Nearly scored there. Wouldn't be surprised to see him get another one here coming up. But here's Afe now. A little bit of space. Drops back. Chance for Fury. And loose puck in front. The opportunity for Mullen just couldn't shovel it home. So both teams getting some very good opportunities here through the opening four minutes after one hell of a defensive battle in that first game. Again, it is our fourth and final game of this broadcast. Each team playing a home and home. And a trip is drawn there. Then Faryastad to the power play. They couldn't end it on the man advantage in overtime in the last game, but a big chance here to get this opening goal. Yeah, that puts them at three for 12 on the season. Still pretty good. I mean, you know, one for four is not bad. We'll see if they're able to get one right here. Looking Urian trying that short side. A defenseman after my own heart with that type of shot just didn't find its way through. Uh, an interesting object on the ice back in the offensive zone. I think that is Furian's skull. Perhaps <laughs> the bucket. I would love to get a pause and a look as it disappeared. Don't worry about it. Nothing. You didn't see anything. Opportunity there for Antonio to drive. Loose buck is cleared out. Now 40 seconds to go on the man advantage for Faryasad. Yep, and I think I saw it pop back up. I'm not saying it was aliens, but it is 100% aliens here. <laughs> the opportunity here. Faryasad just not able to get anything going. And H-Reds will successfully kill that off, continuing to up. The percentage of one of the best PKs in the league so far this season. That one's tipped down. Antonio not able to hold it, nor is Rubitas. Again, we are back to a five-on-five play here. Both teams with a couple of good scoring opportunities. And if you missed it and are just joining us, first and foremost, we thank you for that. H-Red's taking that first game of two in overtime by the score of one to nothing. A true defensive battle there. It might be in store for another one, although these two teams at any time certainly explode for offense. Nicky Dangle's not able to feed that pass through. Great job there by King of Apes, and now it's Benito. Captain in the corner. Down low, h Red willing to take their time on the cycle. Tamu, Nicky Dangle's across. Benito is denied. Mick David with a huge stop there. Chance loose puck in front one more time as Yoki, again, scored that winning goal, the purple indicator for h Reds. And he has been everywhere to the first 11 minutes of this first period. Sort of an interesting decision right there by Afe on the break. And he had passes up to Malin or Antonio. Opted to go back. I'm not too sure if that was just a mispass or if that's what he wanted. Either way, it led to an icing for Faryastad. So definitely not the result that I'm sure he was thinking of. An opportunity here now again for Faryastad to find the opening goal. Antonio tried the short side. Ben Kona stands tall there, though, Sin. We see that from a lot of goalies in this level. They're not going to give up that short side no matter what. They're going to make you earn it. Absolutely not. When you play together so often, you really have to trust your defenseman. You saw it from Fincona right there. He knew Antonio really had no other option there. You know, he did his best. I do like it from Antonio. Just take the shot. You know, play, play, play the shot. You might get that rebound still. You know, instead of trying to set things up, at least put the puck on net. You never know what those in tight chances. Sometimes, if you're a goaltender, you just get beat, and it has you looking at the replay for about five minutes wondering why the heck did that happen. They get there by Mullen, able to win the puck back at center ice. And it's one of those interesting things about that puck moving defensive build. Yeah, so many discussion points about it, the strength of it, the balance in terms of being able to get the puck back, although perhaps being able to be knocked off rather easily as Yoki again in front. A near opportunity there. You see Furian on the other side cut out. H-Red's back in possession here. How long will it take for the opening goal? We had to wait until overtime in the last game. Of course, proved to be the winner. Opportunity now on the stretch pass again. Faryastad having a little bit of trouble hitting those stretch passes here in this first period as Antonio forced to drop it down. Big hit there by Nicky Dangles on his off wing. San Atred's really stepping up the pressure right now. We'll see what happens on this possession. The answer's not much. Huge poke check there for Furian to slow down. A great counterattacking opportunity. Atred with the front foot forward right now. Really putting the pressure on, but one quick goal can change it. Mala not able to hold on to it. Atred again back in possession. One minute remaining. Here in our, the uh, first period here, I was going to say regulation sin. It still feels like in a way that last game is going. Again, with the scoreboard, especially being what it is, I was hoping for an early goal or seven to really differentiate it. Chance here for Antonio, not able to get a shot on short side. Loose puck, two seconds to go. Rubitas tried to throw it through, trying to throw it through the traffic. Easier said than done, and easier said than said. Sin getting a little bit tongue-tied there down the back stretch because what a ridiculous pace that was. 
through that opening 20 minutes. Yeah, I feel like it's no coincidence every time we cover Farius, Dad, we both of us find us tripping over our words or me just sitting there in silence and in awe just by the back and forth action, unable to really speak because you're having to call the play by play. And I like what I saw early from Farius, Dad, though. They tried a couple of those sort of jam plays. We saw it, you know, uh, the in tight shot from Antonio, the first shot they got on net. I think there was... Um, Malin in tight the pass through to him and he just kind of you know tried to put it five hole or something like I believe that might have been the replayer they're looking at or it might have been another case either way that's good from Farisad trying to get some more shots just kind of getting the puck towards the net instead of some of those fancier plays I think that's exactly what they need to do to start getting a bit more offense see again who can find the opening goal to this game outside call against Farisad here in the opening seconds first again talking about these two teams entering play today in a playoff situation. Still have a long way to go here, though. Season 11 of the ECL Elite Division. Again, a 15K prize pool at stake. First again, brought to you by Wilhelm. And again, Sam, we've talked about it, the constant growth of this league. So many you know, professional, you know, professional teams and esports organizations repping clubs throughout the four tiers that we have going on here. Again, the talent level continues to get better and better. The opportunity now for Benito, buying the, biding his time. That was nearly a fantastic move that he pulled off there to get that near post. Afe trying the self-sauce to get around Tamu. And ten, I don't want to say Afe has been completely shut down by Tamu, but as much as we praised King of Apes in the last game, Tamu has been phenomenal shutting down Afe along yeah. that left. Absolutely. And that's the only downside about having, you know, the right hand on the left hand side. If you want to do that self sauce, if the defenseman positions himself right, you really can't get that off. And with that smaller build, that little burst of acceleration is so deadly. So great job by Tamu throughout this, like you said, of really being able to shut him down. The opportunity here for Barriestad, perhaps dangerous play. Antonio throws one on him to stop by Fincona. Second chance, perhaps a third. Down low, low the goal line here. It'll be Yoki who picks this one up. Again, the overtime winner for him in the prior game. But Atred's forced to shut things down. The defensive battle between these two teams. Uh, Sin, I think you could kind of compare it to the uh, complaints that we saw in the real-life Stanley Cup finals or uh, Stanley Cup playoffs, I should say. Of course, Dallas and the New York Islanders making it to the conference final and everyone being like, well, this is boring. Nobody's <laughs> boring. It's such a defensive battle. But the the defensive ability of these two teams with the high paced action it keeps you on your toes absolutely i mean the skill level is definitely theirs we've seen a chance oh the sauce just skitters wide afe has it poked away from him last second there benito back to help out his defenseman there is tamu one of them ditches it off to nikki dangles big spin the cut in front loose puck in traffic shot on rebound was there but benito not able to shovel that one home loose puck miscommunication between antonio and off, eh? It's to h -Red getting back in on the pressure here. Down low, the spin. You can see them trying very bizarre moves. A lot of creativity on display from h -Red right now. He's in really in desperation to catch McSavid off guard. Probably is the, uh, you know, the ultimate form of flattery to McSavid goes and just leaves it all out on the line and comes up with the puck. Yep. You kind of have to just go for it and try creative stuff to beat a goaltender of his caliber and his level of positioning. Absolutely, because he's so technically sound, but at the same Ooh. time, he is also very interesting in the way he moves and the, the saves he chooses to make. I mean, point in case right there, the, the spread eagle at that situation, not usually something you see a goaltender do. The opportunity here, shot on, blocked down in front. The forwards, again, getting back for Farianstad. How about the defense? Just five minutes remaining here in the second period, still looking for the opening goal of this game. I feel like a broken record at this point. And there is a rough mistake from Mullen. The center of Faryastad will take a seat. Big opportunity for H-Reds on the man advantage to find this tiebreaker. Yeah, a bit of an error that the center definitely doesn't want to make. It forces Antonio to take the face off. So we'll see how he does here. H-Reds in on the attack. Yoki not able to hold on to it. And Faryastad will send this one down. Afe might be able to settle it. Nearly walked through. Defended very well. Once again by King of Apes. Here comes h -Reds once more. King of Apes brings it down into the circle. Has a couple of options. Great movement in front. Shot on. Doesn't go through. Great chance once more. The scramble in front. Loose puck is still there. Recovered by Yoki once more. 
Hred's just trying to get a little bit of chaos going in front of the net. Might be the only way to get the goal. Chance here runs through the crease. But it doesn't find its way home. Chance on the counterattack again. King of Apes shutting down Ape. Ten seconds remaining on the man advantage. The toe drag. No shot. Blocked down by Antonio. Mullins out. But they can't time it correctly with him coming out of the box. And it's a huge icing call against the very tired Faryastad lineup. Yeah, and that's, a, I think, a combination of, you know, maybe uh, the, the mic delay, but also getting out of the box. You can't take control of your guy immediately. He kind of skates forward a little bit. That saucer pass was good, just Mullen unable to get to it. Tremendous puck movement there, and another penalty coming up here against Faryastad. Benito able to fend off the pressure, gets it back to King of Apes at the point. They're able to take their time here. Final minute of play. Finn Kona going straight to the front of the net for that man advantage. A lucky pick up there for Yoki. Thought he was going to leave it behind. King of Apes looking. Goes to the opposite side. Back to Tamu. Not Ooh. able to get through as Molly gets that poke check. So again, Atred to the power play. It's going to be an interference call here against. That is Mullen once more, Sam. The center back to the box. Oh, and that is pretty questionable if that is the penalty it looked like he just got rid of the puck right there so Malin probably not happy with that call but nonetheless Faristad gonna have to test their perfect penalty kill once again the former defenseman in Antonio Manon able to make the play <laughs> winning that draw there again against the centerman in Benito over 52 percent so very impressed by Antonio throughout the season sin deja vu I mean Perhaps <laughs> I think I think overtime may just be in order. I do like, you know, we've seen more shots from Faryasad out of this one. They had three shots last time after I think the entire game, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a couple more. But um, this one, they already have four throughout two periods. So they are getting a few more shots here, but I'm sure they would like, like to get more. But, you know, a couple of these penalty kills in a row kind of hurts them. But the good news is, you know, killing it after the period break, they at least get their stamina back. Here we go. Third period underway. Yet again, looking for the opening goal. Here's Benito. Tried the short side. Couldn't get clean through the defenseman. Atreds will hold this one in. Tamu has some options. Goes to his defense partner in King of Apes, who pinches down, sends it across. Tried to hit Nicky Dangles. A little bit off the mark. Good pressure by Afe. He's able to force the offside. Then you called out that sniper build as opposed to the meta of a puck moving defenseman. Having a lot of luck breaking up the possession here with that build. Yeah, he, he just understands how to use it. He knows he doesn't have the poke checking reach. So what he does, he gets in everyone's face. He knows he's got agility and speed. So he uses that to his advantage, gets a lot of incidental contact and bodying people, even as small as it is, bumps are still extremely potent. And Yoki here looking to spin back to the point. Tamu tries to hit Nicky Daniels into the buffer shot. Kick saved by McSaven. 20 seconds to go now on the man advantage. Nicky Daniels going to try to catch McSaven. Leaning shot on Barker oh! second. Hands and a big save. Brushed oh! in the air. Batted in and waved off. Is this one going to stand? I think it's a goalie interference call. Oh, no. Unbelievable. The of events. No oh. goal on the play. Benito flagged down for goalie interference. One of the most bizarre turn of events I've ever seen with the puck going directly up in the air over the goaltender. Sin, we are still without a goal. Here's Malin out of the box. The spin takes the hit. Not able to get a shot on. Sin, we are seeing, I mean, just a, a tremendous amount from these two teams. And even something like that doesn't result in a goal. Here's Antonio trying to work his way past King of Apes. Finds Malin back to the point. Ruba Tuss, the shot on from Furian. Doesn't go. Pass over to Afe. Looks for Antonio once more. It's still Faryastad trying to find those passes in front. Just not paying off. H-Reds down low below the goal line here. Once more looking now. It's King of Apes for Yoki. Back to Tamu shot on. Doesn't find its way on target, I believe. Deflecting there. Turnover though. Nicky Dangles tries to find the pass. Oh, he scores. Sin, it all comes out in the wash in the end. Yoki. Uh, I should say Benito able to find the goal there. Looked like he might go for Yoki across, who had the goal before. Benito gets the goal here, and Atreds have the lead. And that's just a huge momentum boost for Atreds, who are looking stronger and stronger in the offensive zone. But Faristad, they got a quick response. Maybe. And a big chance there. Just doesn't quite go again. Benito, centerman for Atreds. With that goal, they might not be done. Pass in front. Tried to go to the backhand. 
David was scrambling, but Farias not able to hold on. Big turnover there once more. Pass through. Tried to find Yoki yet again. Can't help but think that, again, even on that goal, they were looking for Yoki. He has been a tremendous net front presence, but it was Benito. Like I said, all coming out in the wash. Gets the goal oh. that he probably deserved. What a hit from Afe. A lot of damage on the other side of the blue line as we hit the halfway point here of the third. Faryastad still looking for their first goal against Atreds, and Malin's going to go for another trips in. It's his third penalty of the game. Oh, man, that is such a rough break for him. Again, a situation where it wasn't necessarily the worst play in the world. I think, I mean, yeah, he's got three penalties at this point, but... I would honestly say two out of three of them have a question mark next to him. I mean, the first one, the interference didn't look too much like an interference. And then that one right there, it was a good time to poke. He just sort of got unlucky with it. And we're seeing again, it looked like, yeah, it looks like it hits off McSavid. And then Benito's able to tuck that one home. Either way, a rough break for Fariastad. And if you're, uh, you know, Atrez, you're feeling vindicated after that. Interesting, you know, callback off the goaltender interference. A soft win for Benito. Yoki has options. Tried to pick the corner. McSavid was there. Another chance here now, though. Mullen, four penalty minutes to the first 10 games of the season. He has six penalty minutes in these, uh, in this game alone, I should say. A chance here now once more. Yoki looking. Couldn't get the pass through. First minute nearly gone off the side of the net. Furian turns it over again. Pokes it back off of Nicky Dangles. Great pressure here. From Atrez, off the mistake, Benito on the doorstep. Rubatov is able to take it away. He sends it down on net, forcing Fincona to make the save. And I do believe Afe was pressuring there for a moment. That was an unfortunate camera switch. 15 seconds to go on the man advantage. Back to King of Apes for Benito. Threw it across. Not able to hit the target. Again, back to even strength. What can Firestar do? It's an own goal. Afe tried to find the defenseman. It goes through the five hole of McSavid. And unfortunately, with that, Atreds take a 2 to nothing lead. And that is about, yeah, that's that that hurts if you're, but there's been some times where Faryastat has made some very, very questionable passes in their own end right there. You can't chalk the, oh my they goodness. Benito, the big flying poke check. Can't believe it's to, uh, send still uh, a lot of, uh, like, just befuddlements on my part here. Can't believe that just happened. Atreds back in on the attack. Yoki tried to get it across. I feel like I yelled, like a lot, like really loud. <laughs> I was so caught off by, off, caught off guard by that. Still am. Chance backhand scores, and it's all falling apart for Faryastad. Lenito has his second of the game, if not his third. I didn't even see who got credited for that own goal. Sin Atreds gonna run away with this one. Yep, and if you're Faryastad, it's just like what, what happened? What went wrong? I mean, it's just you. They just continue to get pressured by by Atreds, who just wore them down, sort of flipping the script on Fariestad here as they have another chance for offense. As far as that's really starting to panic here, trying to generate some offense. It'll be uh, too little too late, perhaps. Afe has it, tried to pick the corner on the shot, and a big save there by Fincona. Now under three minutes to play. An incredibly close game that Atreds have begun to run away with. Yoki finds the back of the net, a tremendous individual effort. It's now 4 to nothing, Atreds. The L skating might not be as strong as it was last year, but it has, still has a lot of uses. Puck protection and stop and goes, as we saw right there from Yoki. Excellent job right there to sort of kill his momentum, get around the defenseman. Tough job from, you know, tough, tough break for McSavid, who's in position, but that's why you put the puck on the net. We saw it coming out a bit from Afe there, who got the puck and just shot it. Where was that the rest of the series? Break away, not able to bury it. No hat trick there for Benito. Sin, continue your point at your own risk. I mean, that was basically it. Faristad needed to take more shots. Mo shot scores! Nicky Dangles gets in on the action. 5 nothing in favor of Atred's unbelievable turn of events here, Sin. My goodness. Yep, that's what happens when Faryastad is just not able to play with the lead like they want. And unfortunately for them, they struggle to score, so they struggle to get that first goal. And as I mentioned earlier, Hreds completely flipped the script on them. They were able to wear down Faryastad. They were getting the majority of the chances. They were shutting them down defensively, and they got the first goal. No drag from Mal and the shot on and a glove save. Life in Kona with 52 seconds to go. 
Sin, it has been a very interesting broadcast here between these two series. A lot to talk about, of course. But we'll see here at Firestad. Again, every goal matters, especially when talking about goal differential towards the bottom half of the regular season standings to determine who goes to the playoffs. So still a lot to play for here. Shot from Antonio, and it's going to be waved off for goalie interference. He tried to toe drag that one in. And Sin, it is just, or not a toe drag. Actually, it was a clean shot. He just ran into the goaltender. Yeah. Sin when it rains, of course. A bit curious as to why he didn't try the backhand right there. Perhaps, now this has happened to me, he tried to move his stick and, you know, just put it that much forward. And it, it, I guess that could probably happen a bit easier on those PlayStation controls as the joysticks are, are a bit different. Who's to say right there? I would have liked to see him try the back end, But yeah, as I said, at this point, one goal doesn't really matter, at least for the end of it. It matters for your confidence. You don't want to get shut out twice, but we may just be seeing that. 25 to go. Four man a rush from H Reds, risking it for Fincona here. Antonio between the legs, picked off. Mullen poked the way to the half wall. Antonio still battling Tamu for it. And Firestad come up with it. The answer was no. Big sauce pass picked off by Rubitus. Final seven seconds. Rubitus has it once more. And Sin, that will do it. An incredibly close game through the first two periods, but in the third. The wheels fall off, to say the least. Five nothing. Your final score in favor of H Reds. Yeah, and I, I cannot remember the last time we've seen four shutout games in a row, but I'm not too sure if we've ever seen it. And we definitely, probably wouldn't have expected it from either of these two pairings either. When you look at just you know the pure numbers, and if you're Fariestad, I mean you kind of are at least beginning you have to be able to beginning to see what your achilles heel is you're focusing so much on defense and you're not able to get those you know those chances anymore did your i'm not going to call it a gimmick but did your style kind of run its course after last year's playoffs where you pulled off that upset against yippie Vaskala? do teams know what you're made of right now i mean if you get shut out twice with you know some of the chances that you were sort of passing passing up on and I, I don't know. It, it, it's it's tough to say, but I mean, when, when you when you talk about YMCA in their match, it wasn't a lack of chances that really led to their downfall. It was a lack of being able to bury it. When it comes to Faryastad, I think it actually did turn out to be a lack of chances and a lack of luck in the early, in the first game. You look for too pretty of chances. You didn't just shoot the puck. When you finally started shooting the puck, you were down by multiple goals in the third period. And H Reds is a team that's so good offensively and, you know, very capable defensively. And as we're seeing from King of Apes, looking to be exceptionally even more strong with him taking, you know, growing in leaps of bounds on his, in his own end. And two big wins from H Reds. They move there up to seven, three and two on the season. If you're far, you said you come away with a point, but no goals for, and that hurts. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, Again, for those of you who uh, just joined us for that second series, of course, our first series of the day, YMCA Esports taking on Roots Gaming, where Roots able to pull off back-to-back -back shutouts for Kazu, their goaltender, his first two shutouts in the Elite Division. And then, of course, for this matchup here, as you just saw between H-Reds and Faryastad, back-to-back shutouts, as Sid mentioned, for Finn Kona. Uh, not his first shutout, a Season 1 original, one of the long-standing members of this league, uh, still proving that he has it. All these years later, again, his, uh, you know, the, the next two shutouts on his impeccable record, I believe he now has three shutouts on the season in 12 games to show you uh, the level that he's playing at and where H-Reds have been at defensively. And yeah, Sin, ultimately, you know, you, you talk about that. We mentioned it uh, for YMCA Esports and kind of like for Faryastad in a way you just maybe a little bit less in terms of just, you know, crumple it up, throw it out the window and just let it go. But obviously... I think as you were alluding towards with their style, you know, there might be some uh, some deeper reflection on their part heading into the rest of this week and through the rest of the season because we've yeah. seen it. They don't get that first goal. They struggle mightily. Their best strategy, strike first, force teams to pressure, and then you hit them on the counterattack. And they never had the opportunity to do that against H Reds, and they get shut out in back-to-back -back games. Yeah. And now I don't think necessarily you have to throw everything out the window. If you're Faryastad, the strategy still can be effective. But again, yeah, you're going to have to play to your strengths. If you have to get that first goal, maybe open it up a bit earlier. We saw it in that first game. There was sort of the feeling out process. Both teams hesitant. And when you're doing when you're not attacking, you're not able to score. I think, honestly, if I was Faryastad to break it down, you know, 
yeah, though, those high percentage chances are good. But if you get early into a game, people are expecting that out of you. I think if, if you're if you're far as sad, just start throwing the puck on net. Start going for those jam plays. Look for a bounce. Try to get off a off is using a sniper build. Shoot the puck because you could just snipe it. If, even if someone's in position, you could just pick a corner sometimes. So I'd like to see them utilizing their strengths a bit more, you know, in the future here because the defense looks great. You can't complain about it. Huge difference from last year. But yeah, as we mentioned now, now they're having trouble scoring. It's like if it's not one thing, it's the other. How do they right the ship? Absolutely. So again, as we continue to follow along with this season, a lot of talking points, a lot of storylines developing on a day-to-day -day basis as these results go. Of course, we'll continue to see what happens with these two teams as they continue to push for the playoffs. Again, NHLGamer.com for all the information that you may need. Of course, as well, you can check out those nifty wallpapers on NHL.com. NHL.com, NHLGamer.com, NHLGamer.com. Uh, you know, could overtake NHL.com. Why not? Let's get that traffic up there just a little bit. Now, Sin, of course, it was a heck of a broadcast here. It's a shame it's over, but that does set the stage for the rest of the week as uh, we look at the upcoming games on Wednesday. Just going to get confirmation uh, for what that happens to be, but I do believe uh, there you go on screen right now. Northern Ascendancy, those murderous crustaceans. Uh, we'll be taking on Dark Horse, and of course, Conquer Gaming will be taking on Team Elysian. I said, I believe we've only had the opportunity to call games for Northern Ascendancy thus far, so we'll be able to get a different look at some teams here as we you know continue on here with the season. So I'm very excited for this upcoming broadcast on Wednesday. Yeah, I believe it's Conquer and Team Leisure making their uh, broadcast debut here on NHL Gamer. Dark Horse was uh, covered by our Finnish counterparts on a. I think it was last Thursday um, where when they did their uh, cast there. So, yeah, it's going to be a great matchup here. Uh, more of those teams that could make a splash as long as they just start picking up some wins. Absolutely. So, again, that is NHLGamer.com for all the information that you need. Sin, we could sit here and talk about it all day long, the games that we just saw and what we'll see throughout the rest of this week. But we should end things in a timely manner. So, with that... I want to say a thank you very much. Of course, Sin, it was a blast. Again, nobody else I'd rather be calling these games with. You can find Sin, as you see on screen, on Twitter, at SinFTWProd, on YouTube, at Sin for the Win Productions. If you'd love to see more of him and his sweater, you can find me at Tugi24 on just about everything right here on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, even on Teespring if you want to get a totally not knockoff Carolina Hurricanes t-shirt. Uh, yeah, there's, there's a lot of things happening in the holiday season, but with that... We do want to end things here for today. So, again, we thank you very much for joining us. Stay safe. Have a good one. Take it easy. A shout-out to those behind the scenes that help make this broadcast what it is. Obviously, we are so appreciative for you, and we will see you all on Wednesday. But do not forget, never forget, to support Wilhelm, to eat Wilhelm snacks, to live Wilhelm, to breathe Wilhelm, and say it with me, one, two, three. Wilhelm. Wilhelmin ykköskentän pakkeina uudet tulokkaat. Sour cream snacks ja flaming hot snacks. Kotikatsomoissa mukana Wilhelm snacksit.